Chapter 2711 Harmony's pretty face warmed slightly. Then, she headed back to the kitchen. She couldn't let him wait for too long since he was her guest. As she busied herself in the kitchen, Ezekiel flipped through a book nearby. It was a classic novel, and she had marked it with a bookmark. It indicated that she was someone who enjoyed reading. In this fast-paced era, how many people were willing to take the time to read a book from cover to cover? Harmony would occasionally sneak a peek at the man in the living room, who was engrossed in reading while she was in the kitchen. She found this scene incredibly serene and beautiful. After a while, it even managed to evoke a sense of yearning in her heart. However, she quickly tossed aside her unrealistic thoughts. Just when she was lost in her thoughts, she suddenly remembered the dishes cooking on the stove and hurriedly went to check on them. Meanwhile, the man on the couch lifted the teacup and gazed at the slender and charming figure in the kitchen. She was currently wearing a long, casual t-shirt, which was simple and elegant. It revealed her slender and straight legs, which were a huge attraction for any man. Ezekiel thought about Reuben's words earlier. Could Harmony have told him that they had slept with one another? Otherwise, how could Reuben be so sure they were together? A faint smile tugged at Ezekiel's lips. Even though she had used him as a shield, it was still quite interesting. Harmony prepared four dishes and a soup after puttering about in the kitchen for 30 minutes. Her culinary skills were quite good primarily because she rarely ate out and often had to prepare her own meals after she became a celebrity. Mr. Weiss, dinner's ready, she called out. He stood up and corrected her. Don't call me Mr. Weiss from now on. You can call me Ezekiel, and I'll call you Harmony. Is that all right? Harmony was taken aback by his request. This change in address seemed to bring their relationship closer instantly. She was thrilled as she nodded. Sure. After Ezekiel sat down, Harmony quickly served him food, and he readily accepted the dishes. Her cooking today was on point, and she hadn't slipped up even for a moment. Still, she just wasn't sure if these dishes suited his taste. The instant he took a first bite, she looked at him nervously and asked, Is it too salty? He shook his head and nodded appreciatively. It's very good. Then, she urged, Try this fish. Ezekiel also took a small bite before praising her, It's really good. It's very delicious. Harmony finally felt herself relax, especially since she thought the food tasted decent enough. What do you usually do at home? He asked curiously. Whenever I'm not filming, I read books, do some yoga, and dance at home. Sometimes, I go to the nearby gym, Harmony replied. Then, she returned his question with one of her own, inquiring, what about you? I spend most of my time working. When I have free time, I would go rock climbing, fishing, or hitting the links. Oh, I'm quite the equestrian if I do say so myself. I would race with my friends from time to time, Ezekiel promptly answered. Harmony had refrained from asking him the question for so long did he have a girlfriend. He had helped her so much, and they had appeared together in public several times. If he had a girlfriend, she would do everything in her power to avoid making any public appearances with him in the future. Ezekiel, can I ask you a question? She summoned up the courage. Go ahead. Do you have a girlfriend? She asked, avoiding eye contact. She truly couldn't bring herself to look at him when she finally posed the question. A hint of mirth appeared in Ezekiel's eyes. If I say I don't, would you believe me? She couldn't help but smile. You're right. I don't. You're so outstanding and handsome, there have to be countless people chasing after you. He chuckled in amusement. I can assure you that I truly don't have a girlfriend. It's not that I'm not desired. It's just that I've always been busy with work and haven't found the time for romance. Harmony felt relieved and said, that's good. Otherwise, I was worried it might affect your relationship since we've appeared publicly together so many times. Ezekiel reassured her, saying gently, don't worry. You won't ever have to be troubled with such problems when you're with me. Harmony nodded in acceptance. Time flew by in the blink of an eye, and they had finished their meal by the time they came to their senses. Ezekiel had two bowls of rice and a bowl of soup. It was clear that he was satisfied with the meal. Shall we go shopping at the mall later? Ezekiel suggested. Harmony was more than happy to accompany him. 
He drove the two of them to a nearby high-end mall, which was home to some of the world's top luxury brands and a shopping haven for the wealthy. Can I wear a mask? I've been targeted a lot recently, Harmony jested. Frankly, she was terrified of being recognized when she was just trying to have a good time. He smiled and nodded. Of course. In his eyes, she exuded a lovely aura that made people unable to resist caring for her. So, Harmony's captivating eyes still stood out even though she was wearing a small, black mask that covered half of her face. Ezekiel glanced at the directory, which indicated the women's section on the sixth floor. Thus, he promptly took her straight to the sixth floor. Harmony usually didn't shop here unless the brands were willing to sponsor her by lending out their clothes. Although she was an up-and-coming celebrity, she still didn't have the means to buy any clothing from these high-end stores. So, even though she had achieved some fame as an artist, her casual wear was on the affordable end of the scale. Ezekiel appraised the clothes that were displayed in the window and selected those suitable for Harmony the minute they arrived on the sixth floor. He walked into a well-known store and immediately thought the clothes there were perfect for her. Harmony asked curiously, Are you buying clothes for someone? He smiled mysteriously, Yes, I want to buy some clothes for a girl whose height, weight, and style are similar to yours. Can you try on a few outfits for me? Harmony blinked in surprise. She nodded as she was more than happy to help him. Nonetheless, she couldn't help but find herself curious about the relationship between Ezekiel and the girl he wanted to gift these clothes to. She had only asked if he had a girlfriend earlier but forgot to ask if there was a girl he liked. What if he did and hadn't had the time to confess his feelings to the special girl just yet? At this moment, she knew for certain he had someone in his heart. Sure, I'll help you with that. Harmony agreed. You can pick the clothes, and I'll try them on once you're done. Ezekiel began selecting clothing for her through the catalog. He picked out several outfits that he felt were suitable. Soon, he had chosen seven or eight sets without bothering to consider the prices. He just chose the designs he liked. Okay, please try them on. We'll visit other stores after this, he said. Harmony couldn't help but wonder. He had already chosen so many outfits from this store and still wanted to visit other boutiques. The girl he liked sure was a lucky one. Harmony obediently tried on each set of clothes while Ezekiel looked very serious as he assessed them. Finally, he paid for the rest after dismissing two outfits as unsuitable. Harmony sat on the couch and listened as Ezekiel provided the address and contact number to the attendant for the items to be delivered later. Then, he took her to another store after leaving his contact details. She had worn more than 10 different outfits after going through several stores. These 10 suits weren't just clothes as they also included accessories and shoes, which were all in her size. She thought, Ezekiel bought so much. What if the sizes don't fit? Won't they have to come back to exchange or return them later? He should have called the girl he liked to try them on. That way, he wouldn't pick the wrong size. Let's go into this jewelry store. Ezekiel was here to buy jewelry yet again. Once again, Harmony felt from within the cockles of her heart that the girl he liked was truly lucky. Ezekiel entered the VIP room, where the attendant brought in ten sets of jewelry. The diamonds and numerous jewelry sparkled with an enchanting brilliance under the lights. It was clear that they were beyond expensive. Try wearing them and see which ones you like. Or, do you like all of them? Huh, Harmony blinked. This, do I also need to try them on? Harmony was extremely surprised. In that case, there's no need to try them on. I think they all look good. Let's take them all, Ezekiel said without any reservation. The nearby attendants were all smiles. My goodness, where did this young master come from? He just made a massive purchase. All of these cost millions. Harmony was secretly amazed. However, considering his background, these things were probably just little trinkets to him. As they exited the jewelry store, she wondered if he still needed to buy anything else. Still, she had to admit that she had experienced something totally different while accompanying him. She had visited the high-end stores she wouldn't usually enter and enjoyed the visual treat. However, he seemed like he wasn't ready to leave just yet. He spotted a watch store and said to her, let's go in and take a look. After that, he led her inside. 
He had a keen eye and immediately picked a women's watch. Harmony looked at the price, she remembered this particular model had just been released and was extremely difficult to acquire. Even the ladies of high society had been showcasing their purchase like a peacock the instant they got their hands on such a model. Sir, you have an excellent eye and incredible luck. This watch just arrived today. As we don't accept reservations, this watch is the only one available in the country, said the attendant. Ezekiel said to Harmony, give me your hand. Let's try it on. Harmony had resigned herself to become his model for the day. So, she handed her hand to him, and he placed the watch on her wrist. It was very high-end, and it showcased a woman's taste and demeanor. Do you like it? Ezekiel asked her. Harmony blinked. I think it's very beautiful. Any girl would like it. He curled his lips into a smirk after hearing her opinion. All right, let's go with this one. As the young lady here going to wear it, we'll adjust the watch band for you then. The attendant suggested eagerly. Harmony hastily waved her hands and smiled. No, it's not for me, it's for his friend. Make the watch band according to her wrist size. Ezekiel instructed. Harmony was bewildered. So, she stared at him dumbly as she asked, as the other ladies wrist the same size as mine. Shouldn't you clarify before doing such a thing? I'm sure it's the same as yours, he said as his lips curled into a meaningful smile. The nearby attendant saw through it all. She couldn't help but envy the girl wearing the mask. A handsome man like him was clearly buying it for her. Maybe this girl was a saint of saints in her last life. Harmony then offered her wrist to the attendant for measurement. Just then, Ezekiel's phone rang. He picked it up, glanced at Harmony, and said, I'll step out to take a call and be back in a while. Wait for me here. Okay, she nodded. When he went out to take the call, the curious attendant couldn't resist asking, Miss, is that handsome guy your boyfriend? Harmony smiled and replied, No, we're just friends. The attendant thought to herself, this lady is rather dense. It was so obvious that the handsome guy was buying the watch for her. Was she truly unaware of the fact? The attendant didn't ask further and focused on measuring Harmony's wrist. Just then, three people rushed into the store. One of the girls immediately asked upon entering, I heard the new Blue Morning Star model is available. Show it to me right now. The girl had barely finished speaking when she noticed the watch she wanted on Harmony's wrist. Moreover, she recognized Harmony at a glance. So, she removed her mask and revealed her face. She was Arielle Rowland, an artist born into a wealthy family and was known as the princess of the entertainment circle. It was said that she entered the industry just to experience acting. Nevertheless, she won the Best Actress Award at the age of 20 due to her excellent resources and connections. Unfortunately, she hadn't been active for the last two years, so the Best Actress Award fell in Harmony's lap. Although she had never interacted with Harmony, there was a strange phenomenon in this circle. It was odd as people working in the entertainment industry had the tendency to hate one another on sight. Ariel found the whole thing outrageous and disgusting. The female attendant, who was trying the watch on Harmony, was also pleasantly surprised as she took a good look at Harmony. No wonder she found Harmony's facial features somewhat familiar. So, this was the female artist who had been popular for nearly a year. Harmony was feeling quite stifled. She removed her mask to reveal her lightly made-up face. She was stunningly beautiful, and it naturally made others envious. She was someone who hailed from a humble background. Yet, she possessed such heavenly looks and a figure that attracted attention no matter where she went. Miss Mayo, we're all done. I'll start making the watch strap for you now. The attendant beamed. At that moment, Ariel immediately interjected rudely, wait a minute. I want this watch. Give it to me. I'll buy it. Ariel had been waiting for this watch for three months. She hadn't expected to be one step too late after it finally came to this country. Hence, she genuinely never expected to have it snatched by Harmony. Could someone like Harmony afford such a watch? Was she pretending to be wealthy beyond her means? But, Miss Mayo has already reserved it, the attendant explained. She couldn't afford to offend either side. After all, Ariel was a diamond VIP of their store. Has she paid for it? 
As long as she hasn't paid yet, we can still negotiate, Ariel said with an unquestionable tone as she looked at Harmony. Harmony, if you give me this watch, I'll introduce to you any resources that I have in the future. Deal. Harmony wasn't buying it for herself. It was Ezekiel who wanted to buy it. He had chosen this watch to give to the woman he loved. So, she couldn't back down. She shook her head and said, I'm sorry. I want this watch. Can you afford this watch with your status as a minor artist? Can you display its elegance to its fullest? Others might even think your identity is counterfeit. Give it to me. I've been waiting for it for three months, Ariel mocked. Her companion chimed in sarcastically, that's right. Harmony, one has to have a certain status in order to buy such a gorgeous item. Have you considered whether it suits you? Give it to Ariel. Harmony turned to the attendant and said, I'm not giving it up. Please make the watch strap. Ariel flushed with anger as she hissed, You, Harmony, don't you dare provoke me. You know my status in the industry. I'll use my connections to blacklist you. Harmony, you won't earn much money even if you film a movie. Why bother spending so much on this watch? There are other watches here. Give it to Ariel right now. Yeah, you, a lower tier artist, can't afford it. So, stop pretending to be rich. Harmony, are you going to give it up? If you refuse to do so, you'll be slighting me. Once you do, you'll definitely have a hard time in this circle in the future, Ariel threatened Harmony as she crossed her arms over her chest. Yeah, if you can't afford it, just forget it. You'd better run along and buy something cheaper with the money you actually have. As the three girls continued to verbally abuse Harmony, they were unaware that a handsome and stony-faced man had already arrived at the door. He had been standing right there as they only hurled insult after insult at her face. The attendant caught sight of him and wanted to warn these young ladies not to continue being so impolite to Harmony. However, she also wanted to watch the show unfold. So, she pretended to hesitate as she regarded them. Harmony bit her lip as she racked her mind to come up with ways to defend herself. Just then, a deep voice came from behind, saying, who said she can't afford it? Ariel and her two friends immediately turned their heads. Their expressions immediately changed the second they laid their eyes on him. One of them even covered her mouth. Normally, she acted like a refined and delicate lady, especially when facing a handsome man like the one before her. She had always played the persona of a weakling who could do no wrong. Harmony saw Ezekiel returning, and she couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. He had finally returned. Otherwise, she really didn't know what to do to stop them from getting their hands on this watch. Who are you? Ariel had hidden her previous churlish attitude and donned her elegant facade. Ezekiel took out his wallet and pulled out a black card before handing it to Harmony. Take it and swipe it however you like. Buy as many watches as you want. With that, he picked up his phone. I'll make another call. He was leaving this situation for Harmony to handle herself. As Harmony held Ezekiel's black card, it truly felt as if her status had suddenly skyrocketed. She understood his intention. She waved the black card in front of Ariel and asked, Do you think I can't afford it? Then, she turned to the attendant. Please make the watch strap for me. Sure, Miss Mayo. We'll make it for you right away. The attendant was also delighted with the turn of events. The way wealthy people argued was truly straight to the point. All it took was one swipe of a black card, and it would shut even the most arrogant rich girls up. Can this card be used? Ariel immediately became suspicious. However, she recognized that this black card wasn't something anyone could obtain. She wasn't even qualified to own one despite her family's wealth. This was an international card with unlimited spending limits. Hence, it naturally had extremely strict requirements for assets, as procuring such a card required identity verification. Ariel, this card seems to be a genuine black card. Harmony said to the attendant, swipe it for Miss Roland. Let her see whether this is the real deal. The attendant took the credit card machine, entered the amount, and briskly swiped the card without further ado. It instantly showed the transaction was successful and printed the receipt. Ariel and her friends were left in shame. They had just been mocking Harmony for being poor. Alas, now they had no choice but to shut their mouths in response. Are you satisfied now, Miss Roland? 
Harmony took back the black card and looked up at Ariel. Ariel was biting her lip in anger. You, where did you get such a wealthy boyfriend? That's none of your business. Harmony raised an eyebrow. Still, her sweaty palm that was holding the hand betrayed her anxiety. Dear Lord, take it away from me. It was her first time seeing a black card, and now she was holding it in her hand. Even though it was light, she could still feel an imaginary burden falling upon her shoulders like a ton of bricks. We'll see about that. I'll remember this, Ariel said as she wanted to give herself an out. As Ariel flounced off, Harmony felt herself gradually relax. She stepped outside and saw Ezekiel standing there. It was just as she expected. He was not making a call but resting. She walked over and handed him the card, utterly grateful. Here's your card. Thank you for helping me out just now. She extended the black card to him. Alas, the man showed no intention of taking it. Instead, he merely looked at her. She blinked and wriggled the card before him, saying, Please keep the card. It's too conspicuous. When Ezekiel saw that she was getting worked up, he finally reached out, took back the card, and said, Next time you encounter such a situation, just call me. Don't let others look down on you anymore. It's okay. This kind of thing isn't new to me, Harmony replied casually. Ezekiel heard her words and felt a pang of heartache. He patted her gently. I won't let anyone look down on you like that again. Harmony was momentarily surprised. Then, she raised her head and smiled at him gratefully. Thank you. You've already helped me a lot. At that moment, the attendant approached while holding the watch that had been prepared for Harmony. Miss Mayo, your watch is ready. Harmony took it, checked it again, and handed it to Ezekiel. Take it to your friend. I'm sure she'll love it. Ezekiel took it and said to her, wait here. I'll have the store deliver it to my friend's place. He went back in once he said that. So, Harmony stood by the railing with her mask on and waited for him. After a while, he left the store. They had somehow spent the entire afternoon shopping. Mr. Weiss, it's getting late. Would you like to return? Harmony asked him. Ezekiel nodded after glancing at his watch. Yes, I should go back. I'll send you home. She didn't want to trouble him further. It's okay. I'll take a cab home. No way. It's not safe. Ezekiel immediately rejected the idea. It'll be fine. It's very safe, Harmony said with a wink. I'm still worried, Ezekiel simply replied. Harmony felt a pang of warmth in her heart. Nonetheless, she quickly composed herself as she didn't want to overthink things and make a fool out of herself. He had a woman he liked. Every word he said to her only came out of the concern he felt for a friend. She could not allow herself to misinterpret it for something else. Okay, thank you, she nodded. She followed Ezekiel to the underground car park and got into the car. He immediately drove straight toward her home. Once she was in the car, she could not help but ask in curiosity, Mr. Weiss, does the woman you like live in Averna? Her question caught him off guard, causing him to momentarily freeze in surprise. Then, he smiled and nodded. Yes, she's here. She has to be a very beautiful and graceful woman. She could not resist wanting to know more. Yes, she's an elegant beauty with a great figure. Everything about her is perfect, he answered. Meanwhile, Harmony was already envisioning a beautiful and generous rich young woman. After all, only a woman with those looks and status deserved a man like him. If given the chance, she truly wanted to see just what the woman he adored looked like, her home was not far away. So, they soon arrived after a little over ten minutes. Once she got out of the car, she waved at him. Bye, drive safely. Bye. Then, he asked, your phone is not on silent mode, is it? It's not. What is it? It's nothing. I just want to make sure you'll answer calls later. She was stunned. Was he planning to call her later tonight? Nevertheless, she smiled and said, okay. I'll keep an ear out for my phone. Take care. It was only then that Ezekiel turned around and drove away. She heaved a small sigh of relief. It had been a great day. Plus, the fact that Ezekiel had helped her deal with Ariel was very satisfying. Sarah called Harmony to ask about her relationship with Ezekiel as soon as she stepped into her home. In a burst of impulsivity, Harmony told her about Ezekiel's big splurge. 
it has got to be over 3 million. Just those 10 sets of accessories plus a watch worth over 400,000 would equal around 2 million. I didn't keep track of everything since he bought clothes as well. Regardless, he really went all out. Does this mean Mr. Weiss does have someone he likes? He just hasn't won her over yet, right? Sarah asked. That's right. I wonder what kind of girl would be so hard for him to win over. Harmony was dying to know more about this mystery woman. Oh, and here I thought you stood a chance. Sarah, that's nonsense. How could I possibly be with him? I'm self-aware enough to know that he's way out of my league. So, I'm being sincere when I say that I wish for him to be able to marry the woman he loves, Harmony honestly stated. Harmony curled up on the couch in exhaustion after chatting with Sarah about work. However, she could not resist the flicker of joy welling in her heart when she recalled that Ezekiel had dined in her home earlier today. Unfortunately, she had no right to express her happiness, nor did she dare to do so. That was because he had a woman he liked. Judging from his expenditure today, there was no doubt that he loved her a great deal. Therefore, any feelings she felt for him were doomed to be unrequited. Thus, she had to discreetly work through this alone before misunderstandings occurred and caused him unnecessary trouble. She shifted into a comfortable sleeping position on the couch, planning to take a nice nap. No work days were days when she could catch up on her sleep. That was because once filming started, she would have to lead a hectic life where day was night and night was day. Her mind had taken on a rather fuzzy quality, and she was more than ready to drift off to La La Land when her phone started ringing, jerking her awake. Her eyes snapped open as she grabbed her phone to look at the cruel interloper that had interrupted her soon-to-be slumber. When she saw that it was an unknown number, she cautiously answered it, saying, Hello. Who's this? Miss Mayo, are you home? Who are you? I'm the courier here to deliver your purchases from our store earlier today. We're at your door. Could you sign for the parcels? Harmony froze. Did she buy something today? Was there anything she had bought online that had yet to arrive? She could not think of anything. Just then, she heard her doorbell ring. Thus, she said into the phone, give me a moment. I'll be right there. Harmony slid her feet into a pair of slippers and peeked out of the door's peephole. To her surprise, there truly was someone standing out her door. She opened the door to find four sales associates standing right before her. They were all holding bags of clothes. The label printed on the bags caused her eyes to go wide. She even recognized the sales associate standing at the head of the group. This was the sales associate who had attended to Ezekiel earlier that day. Miss Mayo, please check whether your items are all here. If there are no problems, please sign here. Harmony was frozen for several long moments before she finally responded faintly, the clothes are not meant for me. Are you sure you have the right place? The sales associate smiled. There's no mistake. We were instructed to deliver the purchases here. This is the address given to us by the gentleman at noon. What? He gave you my address? Harmony was confused. Had Ezekiel made a mistake? Had he mistakenly written down her address instead of the address of the woman he loved? Gee give me a moment. I need to make a call. Harmony closed the door before dashing over to the couch. She had to inform Ezekiel to make sure the goods were sent to where they were supposed to go. When she called him, he was in the middle of working in the hotel conference room. He smiled when he saw who was calling. Something interesting was about to happen. Hey, he said, answering the phone. Mr. Weiss, it's me. Did you put down the wrong address for delivery earlier today? You know, when you were shopping. You wrote down my address. Judging by the way Harmony was speaking, she was clearly panicking. His smile deepened as he chuckled. It's no mistake. Your address is precisely what I meant to write down. Huh, aren't these meant for the woman you love? Why did you put down my address? The realization had not hit her just yet. That was because her mind was stuck on the assumption that Ezekiel had a woman he was deeply in love with. She had also repeatedly told herself that woman could never be her. That's because I bought all of that for you. Accept them, he said gently in his enchanting voice. She was so shocked that she accidentally allowed her phone to slip out of her hand and fall to the floor. Her heart raced as she slapped a hand over her mouth. Mr. 
Weiss, stop joking around. You spend millions today. I never joke around. Harmony, I've paid for everything. Please do me the honor by accepting them. I have a meeting to attend. So, I'll talk to you later. He ordered her to sign for the gifts without giving her the chance to question him further. Her mind was filled with white noise for seconds before her rusty brain cells started turning. She finally realized that he had not asked her to try on the clothes because he planned to give the clothes to another woman. Instead, those clothes were meant for her. The lucky woman he was in love with was actually her. She felt like her entire body was going numb from shock. It was her. He had been very generous when purchasing clothes that day. When he bought jewelry, he bought them in sets of ten. He even bought the latest watch and the measurements, was that all for her? She felt like she was going mad. Yet, when she recalled she had several sales associates waiting outside her door with bags of purchases, she pinched herself and got ready to face the world. Then, she took a deep breath in order to calm herself before opening the door and saying to the sales associates, please just put the bags here. They neatly lined up the bags on the floor. After Harmony signed the delivery slip, she stared at the clothes with wide eyes. These were clothes she could never bring herself to buy, no, not in a million years. Wait, there were three more clothing brands other than the one that had arrived. There were bags, shoes, jewelry, watches. She hurried over to the couch and frantically dialed Sarah's number. Hey, Sarah, it's me. I know it's you. Weren't we just on the phone? Sarah, major news. Do you know who Mr. Weiss bought everything for? What? Have you found out who that mystery woman is already? Tell me, which lucky woman is it? Sarah was eager to have her curiosity quenched. Alas, Harmony was far from pleasantly surprised right now. Instead, the surprise was so massive that it had turned into pure shock. You would never have guessed it, Harmony sounded like she was going mad. Tell me, I don't have time to play guessing games. It's me, he bought all that stuff today for me. The address he gave to the shops is mine. He's giving me everything he bought. Sarah, I don't know what to do. Harmony was starting to sound less and less coherent. What? You lucky girl. You truly have lucked out. Sarah was happy for her. However, Harmony felt like crying. Who am I to even accept so many gifts from him? People always say you shouldn't bite the hand that feeds you. I'm too scared to accept this. I'm going to send it all back to him. I'm scared that I won't be able to repay this favor in the future. There was a very timid look on Harmony's face as she spoke. Silly girl, what nonsense are you spewing? Can't you see that even if he wants you to pay him back, the payment wouldn't be money? It would be you. Anyway, if you really think about it, being able to sleep with him is also a form of pleasure. Sarah, you, Harmony felt faint upon hearing that. Nevertheless, that was just how conversations between the two of them went. There would occasionally be playful jests tossed about as Sarah was a 39-year-old woman who liked to make sexual jokes. There was a chance that Sarah was doing it on purpose because of how Harmony would react every single time she cracked a joke like that, not because the woman would admit it to Harmony's face. Oh, please, don't tell me for a second that you don't want him. Sarah instantly hit the nail on the head. Harmony was internally screaming her agreement. Ever since she had gotten to know Ezekiel, she lost track of what self-restraint was. Instead, she would spend all day long thinking of him and lusting after him while acting like a proper lady on the surface. Just then, her phone rang. She had gotten another call. Sarah, I have to get off the phone right now. I have an incoming call. Harmony answered the call. Her current greatest fear was confirmed as it was from couriers, who were waiting at her door. Since these were personally delivered by these sales associates, the parcels had to be full of expensive luxury goods that could not afford to be damaged in any way. After she was done accepting the parcels, she received another call in less than 10 minutes. There was yet another batch of parcels for her to sign for. In the end, her nap was interrupted as she had to sign off on the delivery slips from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Ezekiel had specifically instructed the shops to deliver his purchases during this hour. Finally, once the watches and jewelry were delivered to her doorstep, she was certain that everything that he had bought earlier that day had been delivered. The shops even gave her over a dozen samples and gifts that were priceless by themselves. 
When she looked at the mountain of goods in her tiny living room, she could feel her jaw hanging. Although they were all costly, their current condition was a little ridiculous. Since it had been an hour, her shock subsided by a smidge as amusement crept in. As Ezekiel was still in a meeting, she did not dare disturb him. Nonetheless, there were far too many things cluttered around her living room. What was she meant to do with them? Well, there was the set of jewelry she did not have time to properly admire in the shops. Now, she could take her sweet time to admire them to her heart's delight. As for the watch, considering the fact that it was a model that Ariel was begging for and still failed to get her hands on, Harmony definitely had to properly apprise it in the comfort of her own home. Now, that very watch was strapped on her wrist. It was exquisite, a true masterpiece. She sighed as her mind ran wild. When it was almost 7 p.m., she finally mustered up the courage to call Ezekiel. Hey, he answered. Are you done with your meeting? Can we talk now? She blurted urgently. He chuckled upon hearing the pleading tone in her voice. I'm done. We can talk. I don't know what to do with all the things you're giving me. If I had known the gifts were for me, I wouldn't have tried on so many outfits, she sincerely confessed. She was completely at a loss for what to do. You don't need to feel weighed down by this. Just accept them. If you want to pay me back, you can invite me over for a few more meals. My cooking's mediocre at best. I know for a fact that it's not that delicious, she rebuked. Her cooking was not worth a lot. Judging from his background, he probably had five-star meals daily. I'm happy when I'm with you. That joy is priceless, he replied. Her heart violently skipped a beat. Was that true? Was he really that happy when he was with her? I don't have space for all the gifts you've given me, though. Why don't I return some for you? You can give them to someone else, she suggested. I don't have any other young women I'm close to. Plus, those gifts were chosen just for you. If you don't have space for them, I'll just give you a villa. The way he spoke made it sound like he was just discussing what to eat for his next meal. What Ezekiel said terrified Harmony, and she hastily rejected the offer. There's no need for that. Don't give me anything. My home has enough space for the gifts. Don't give me a villa. I won't accept it anyway. Her refusal of his offer made Ezekiel grin. She was so adorable. Okay, we'll discuss it another day. Not even in the future. I really can't accept it in good conscience. I don't even know how to repay you for the gifts you've given me today, she said with her face twisted in frustration. I don't need you to repay me anything, he replied with a chuckle. I want to, though, she shot back. How do you want to repay me then? He was strangely curious. She instantly recalled Sarah's comment about giving herself to him. Her face went bright red as she stammered, I I don't know yet. Okay, we'll talk about it once you've thought about it. There's no rush. He chuckled once more. There was an eager glint shimmering within his eyes. Thank you for today. There's no need for formalities between us. I'll talk to you when I'm free. I have another meeting to attend, he said as he was still stuck in the conference room. Very well. I'll let you get back to work. She hung up and sighed as she stared at her phone. The sudden onslaught of ludicrous wealth was making her feel rather faint. Just as she was about to settle down and relax, her phone rang once more. She turned to look at it, wondering if it was Ezekiel. It was not. Instead, it was Sarah. Hey, Sarah, the apocalypse, is flying in for their promotional tour. Girl, you've been invited to attend with the entire main cast. What? Are you serious, Sarah? Harmony was beside herself with excitement. It was a great honor. Absolutely. Also, you're placed quite prominently on the posters. This is just a guess, but I'm guessing Mr. Weiss has dragged the entire cast over for their tour just to promote you. Harmony was already overwhelmed by all of Ezekiel's sweet gestures. Hence, she was dumbfounded when she heard that he did this for her as well. Just how am I meant to repay him, Sarah? Honey, it's real simple. Here's all you need to do. After this tour, don't hesitate to put on your best spaghetti strap dress. Then, knock on his door in the middle of the night. I guarantee that whatever gift you're planning won't be able to top that. Sarah, be serious, Harmony retorted. Can we please exercise some restraint? If you won't do it, I will. 
You, Harmony burst out laughing, utterly exasperated. Stop fooling around, Sarah. Help me think of a plan. I genuinely feel like I owe him way too much. Well, it's up to you. I think Mr. Weiss is only doing this because he likes you. Do I need to tell you what he wants? Reuben didn't lay a hand on you, right? Be honest with me. Are you still a... Harmony blushed. She had never discussed this with anyone else before. Nevertheless, she decided to be frank today. Yes, I'm still. That's good enough. Give him the best. That is the perfect way to repay him. As someone who worked in the entertainment industry, Harmony knew full well that many business deals were done just for that thing. Job opportunities and connections were, frankly speaking, all done for sex. It was just a transaction where the other person's body was the price. Naturally, she did not want to think he was that shallow. Yet, she also couldn't deny that she wouldn't hesitate if he needed something like that. Right now, she couldn't help but feel super glad that she had never allowed Reuben to go beyond first base. That SC asterisk MBAG didn't deserve it. Her decision had allowed her to keep her body for the man she loved in the future. She also knew that repaying a man with sex would make her seem frivolous. So, she was quite stumped. How else could she make it up to him besides offering herself? Then again, she would probably want to be kicked off to Mars if he rejected her after she approached him. The event is this Saturday. Don't overthink things. I can feel your brain overcooking. Wrap up this tour before spending your time thinking about this stuff. Got it, Harmony replied. The cast and crew think highly of you. So, we need to be well prepared and not let them down. Harmony solemnly responded, I understand. I will. Meanwhile, the media had leaked that the cast and crew of The Apocalypse would be flying in on their press tour. Everyone was instantly excited. After all, the show was a worldwide phenomenon. They were all looking forward to the next season that would be released in the summer holidays. It was a show that billions were eager to watch. Two days later, the cast of The Apocalypse landed in Averna and was swiftly welcomed by passionate fans. The press event was extremely unique as it was an hour-long event in the largest event venue in the city. The event was ticketed in order to control the number of fans allowed in as a crowd control measure. Even so, the front row seats were all snatched up by the fans in seconds. This was the first event that would reveal a new character outside of the main cast. The cast and crew were acting very mysterious, making many journalists wonder if they were stopping in Averna for the first time ever on their promotional tours because there would be a Zoravian actor or actress who would be joining the show. Just who could it be? Many actresses seized the chance to milk the situation, allowing many media outlets to gain some publicity. Harmony was invited to the hotel the cast and crew were staying in. The event was very special as every cast member would be attending while dressed as their characters. Her costume was very expensive since it was a custom historical dress that cost 500,000 to make. Her headdress was similarly costly as genuine diamonds were encrusted on the accessory. It was a very striking outfit. Combined with her distinctly eastern beauty that gave her a mystical aura, she was extraordinarily gorgeous. Thus, Harmony was suddenly thrown into a busy rush. Although she felt a pang of longing for Ezekiel, she knew that someone as busy as he was would never have the time to attend the event. Alas, she had never been more wrong. Ezekiel had been invited to the show. In fact, he would be seated at the center of the stage. He did not tell her about it because he wanted to surprise her. He was a man who excelled at creating surprises. Strangely, he didn't have the talent for it before meeting Harmony. After he met her, his emotional intelligence seemed to have taken a sudden leap for the heavens. It was so considerable that he had somehow understood that surprises and romantic gestures were something he had to do if he wanted to show his sincerity. This was a skill that all men instantly grasped the moment they encountered a woman they wanted to cherish and protect. There were 2,000 fans present in the venue, and they hailed from all corners of the world. They were all eagerly waiting to interact with the cast, to personally witness the allure and charm of these superstars. Catalina was present as well, and she had dragged Ruben along with her. That was because they were both fans of the show. She had used her connections to get her hands on tickets for third-row seats. 
that would give them a better view of the cast's interactions with each other. Of course, several celebrities had snuck in as well. They were all wondering if the additional stop on the tour really meant there would be a Zoravian celebrity in the show. Just who was it? Catalina bumped into Sarah on her way to the bathroom. Shocked, she called out, Sarah, why are you here? Is Harmony here as well? Sarah held up her staff card. I work here. Oh, have you changed to work here instead? Don't tell me you were hired to be a janitor because of your age, Catalina said with a mocking cackle. Sarah shook her head. Your guess is wrong. I may not have done that well for myself, but I'm not that terrible. Is Harmony here as well? Catalina genuinely wanted to know the answer. You'll see her later, Sarah said curtly before walking away. Catalina huffed in disdain. I didn't say I want to see her. Meanwhile, Harmony was sitting in the dressing room as anxiety started to overwhelm her. It was her first time participating in a promotional event with a top-tier cast, especially when she was practically a nobody next to them. How could she not be nervous? Chapter 2721 Amid her preparations, Harmony meticulously applied her makeup while poring over today's script. Notably, all her lines were penned in Chinese, and later, when she was on stage, she would have to communicate in Chinese. Harmony's greatest fortune stemmed from her hard work in mastering Chinese. She knew that in this industry, she had to constantly improve herself to achieve better development. Thus, she mastered Chinese proficiency to broaden her acting opportunities. She even invested half a year abroad, immersing herself in intensive language courses to hone her spoken Chinese like a native. The fruits of her labor were evident now, as she finally found herself in a position to put her linguistic prowess to good use. Harmony's gaze occasionally drifted to her phone, yet she hesitated to invite the man she had in mind. Hey, Harmony. A distinctly foreign voice sounded, the owner of which was speaking in a not-so-standard English. Harmony raised her head and saw the handsome male second lead in his costume greeting her warmly. A smile graced her lips as she reciprocated, Hey. I just picked up an English phrase, and it happens to be your name. It sounds so beautiful, he remarked. Thank you, Harmony responded, her joy evident. Since they were an on-screen pairing, there would be plenty of interactions between them on stage. While the male and female leads held perennial popularity, the male second lead was a charming rising star from Monsant, who injected a youthful vibrancy into the narrative. At the moment, fans outside had eagerly taken their seats, anticipating the upcoming interactions with the main cast. Meanwhile, amidst the bustling traffic, a young master found himself stuck in the line of cars again. He drove himself here and now could only be patient as he awaited the gradual movement of the congested line. Ezekiel glanced at his wristwatch and checked the time 2.22 p.m. The event was scheduled to commence at 2.30 p.m., so he would inevitably arrive late. At this moment, a bold attempt to cut in line caught Ezekiel's attention. Despite his generally affable nature, he wasn't about to permit such an intrusion now. He immediately pressed the horn firmly, stopping the offender. That man was visibly irritated and rolled down his window, ready to voice his grievances. As soon as the window went down, he exclaimed, why don't you let me cut in line? Ezekiel lowered his car window, revealing a face that was both handsome and stern, his intense gaze fixed on the offender. If you dare to cut in line, you'll see what happens next. The moment the driver saw Ezekiel's appearance and his car, he cowered instantly, hurriedly offering his apologies. Sorry, I'm truly sorry. With that, he promptly rolled up the window and reversed the car. Ezekiel observed the movement of the cars ahead starting to move, and a second later, his vehicle surged forward. Finally, at 2.29 p.m., Ezekiel arrived, only to find the parking lot packed to capacity. Many cars occupied adjacent spaces, but Ezekiel paid no heed. He found a non-obstructive spot and parked. After securing the parking space, he snatched up his phone, swiftly exited the car, and headed straight to the venue. On the way, some female fans were rushing as well. However, when they looked up and caught the sight of the tall man passing by, they couldn't help but emit hushed exclamations. Oh my god, is this some incredibly handsome celebrity? At 2.30 p.m., the event unfolded without any suspense. 
The opening act was a public performance featuring a top-tier singer. Following his mesmerizing vocals, the three directors made their official entrance, accompanied by the host's fluent opening speech in both English and Chinese. Subsequently, the male and female leads graced the stage hand in hand, eliciting applause from the audience. After the exchange of pleasantries, the host invited the second team to join them on stage the four crucial supporting roles for the movie. All eyes were eagerly fixed on the stage. They were waiting to see the super handsome second male lead who had just joined the production. Behind the waiting curtain, Harmony was mentally preparing herself. At that very moment, the second male lead took her hand, suggesting, let's walk hand in hand. Harmony was startled. Is it okay? No problem, the second male lead answered, and with the host's words and the sound of music, they walked hand in hand onto the stage. Harmony walked onto the stage alongside the second male lead, sending the young female fans into a frenzy of excitement, their crazy screams echoing through the air. The audience below, however, was left dumbfounded. What had they just witnessed? A girl, hand in hand with the dashing male co-star. Who was she? Were their eyes deceiving them? Were they hallucinating? It turned out to be Harmony Mayo. A wave of astonished murmurs swept through the audience, their voices tinged with disbelief. Oh my god, is that Harmony Mayo? It's really her. Who would have thought she would join this production and play such a crucial supporting role? The shock resonated deeply with Catalina and Ruben. They were aware that Harmony had spent half a year in Monsant filming, but the revelation of her joining this high-profile project and taking on a key supporting role left them staggered. How is this possible? How can it be her? Catalina clenched her fists tightly, her incredulity apparent. Was Harmony's life on some kind of extraordinary trajectory? Ruben, too, couldn't hide his envy. It seemed that after Harmony parted ways with him, she soared to new heights while he remained stagnant. Weiss must be helping her, Reuben mused. He knew better than anyone about Harmony's capabilities. Catalina couldn't help but feel envious. She wished she could ride on the coattails of someone like Ezekiel. At that very moment, on the steps in the audience seating area, another figure descended. His gaze, however, was firmly locked on the girl holding hands with the handsome second male lead. She looked breathtaking today, and when she stood with the dashing second male lead, they looked like a perfect couple. For the first time, Ezekiel felt his heart tighten as if something that was rightfully his was being claimed by another man. The sensation was unpleasant. He chose not to sit in his designated spot. Instead, he settled in a vacant seat nearby and watched her from the audience, not wanting to disrupt the event. At this moment, the online world was swiftly live-streaming this promotional extravaganza, catapulting Harmony once again to the zenith of the trending charts with many close-up shots of her. The spotlight was on the absolute splendor of her a beauty that was unparalleled and irreplicable. Though Harmony harbored a touch of nervousness, the charismatic and humorous guidance of the second male lead alleviated her tension. Her performance exuded a natural grace, with the second male lead exhibiting a remarkable attentiveness to her emotions. His gaze, when directed at Harmony, unmistakably bore the hallmark of affection. A collective sigh of heartbreak echoed through the audience below. Their cherished idol was seemingly enamored with Harmony. Yet, on this day, Harmony's allure transcended flawlessness be it in her appearance, physique, or eloquent expression of the Chinese language. Why didn't they realize before how exceptional she was? Even Reuben found himself engulfed in regret. How did he overlook Harmony's potential for such breathtaking beauty? He had once ridiculed her during her diligent Chinese practice, saying, what's the use of practicing Chinese? You won't need it in the future. Harmony, however, proved otherwise. Her achievements reached far beyond the confines of domestic acclaim. Her career was now ascending to unprecedented heights. When Catalina turned her head, she noticed that Reuben's gaze had been fixed on Harmony. A pang of jealousy surged within her, prompting her to discreetly pinch his leg. What are you looking at? Is she that pretty? Although Catalina harbored no affection for Reuben, she was resolute in disallowing any rekindled interest he might have in Harmony. She's not as pretty as you. Reuben quickly reassured her. Yet, the underlying irony of his words was palpable. In the colossal poster unfurling before them, Harmony's beauty manifested as an ethereal reverie, exhibiting a vintage mystique. 
The attire she adorned was the dream of countless young girls. In a secluded corner, Ezekiel's lips curled up into a smile. However, as he watched the second male lead enthusiastically conversing with and looking affectionately at Harmony, who responded with a sweet smile, Ezekiel's eyes narrowed slightly. Upon watching Harmony fix her mesmerizing, crescent-like eyes fixed on another man, Ezekiel felt jealous. He didn't want others to appreciate the allure of her gaze. Meanwhile, he overheard two guys talking nearby. I didn't expect Harmony to be such a beauty. She's a goddess. I always thought she was stunning. Sigh, I wonder who she'll end up with in the future. Ezekiel listened, and suddenly, his heart effortlessly echoed that sentiment. Me. Of course, he kept that declaration to himself. The onstage interaction was reaching a fever pitch. Fans laughed incessantly, reveling in the proximity to their idols, akin to a scene from a movie. The money they spent felt like a bargain. Catalina's face contorted with anger when she heard the fans showering praise on Harmony. It seemed Harmony had triumphed once again, ascending not only in celebrity status but also earning a reputation for her beauty. Ruben couldn't tear his gaze away from Harmony, but Catalina could no longer be bothered with him. As the nearly hour-long interaction neared its end, the fans were reluctant to part ways. Yet, up next was the photo session for lucky fans to get up close with their idols. Harmony had become a celebrity with tons of male fans, and all of them were vying for a chance to capture a moment with her. Ezekiel, too, rose to his feet. He strode toward the stage, and at this moment, he unexpectedly caught the director's eye, who came down from the stage personally to welcome him. After Harmony posed for photos with two fans, she sensed another presence approaching. The moment she looked up, her heart skipped a beat. It was Ezekiel. Miss Mayo, may I have a photo with you? He grinned. Harmony nodded with a bashful smile. Of course. Without hesitation, she stepped toward him. Ezekiel, more direct than the other fans, extended his arm and pulled her in for the photo. They looked like a perfect match. When did you get here? Why didn't you give me a heads up? I got in late, so I snagged a seat in the back, Ezekiel replied, when he saw Harmony up close, she seemed even more beautiful, causing his heart to flutter. God knew how elated Harmony felt inside, she was practically on the verge of bursting with happiness. It was as if at every place she wished for him to be, he appeared. This feeling was even more joyful than hitting the jackpot. Just then, a staff member walked over and said, Miss Mayo, there are a few fans over there who would love to take a photo with you. Do you mind? The staff member hesitated. Harmony looked up and spotted two boys and four girls standing there, all eager to take a photo with her. Naturally, she wouldn't decline such requests. She nodded, but at that moment, the man beside her suddenly declared, she can only take photos with girls. No photos with guys, please. Ezekiel's voice cut through. Harmony's eyes widened slightly in surprise. Then, she saw a hint of jealousy in that man's eyes. Was she imagining things? Okay, I'll arrange for the girls to come over for photos. The staff member immediately went over. The disappointed boys were left hanging while the excited girls hurriedly approached. Harmony, we love you so much. Yes, we're all huge fans of yours. Taking a photo with you is a dream come true. As the fans expressed their joy, they took note of Harmony. Just then, someone noticed Ezekiel next to her and curiously asked, Harmony, is this your boyfriend? Harmony felt a twinge of embarrassment. Ah, uh, H he is. Before she could elaborate on their relationship, the fans enthusiastically caught on. Harmony, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Don't worry, we won't spill. You're so lucky to have such a handsome boyfriend. Harmony turned her head, casting an embarrassed glance at Ezekiel. It wasn't her fault for not clarifying. The fans had misunderstood before she could set things straight. The man smiled with a hint of affection in his eyes. Upon seeing that the man didn't mind, Harmony smiled shyly, stood with the fans, and took various photos with them. Meanwhile, Ezekiel's phone rang, so he stepped aside to answer it. After Harmony finished taking photos, she turned around but didn't see him, so she started feeling a bit anxious. At that moment, a handsome figure approached her it was the second male lead, Bird. 
He looked excited yet a bit shy as he said to Harmony, Harmony, are you free for lunch tomorrow? I'd like to take you out. I'll be staying here for a week for vacation, and we could have a meal and some coffee. She also had a favorable impression of him. Firstly, he had taken good care of her during their interaction on stage just now. Without his witty cooperation, this promotional event would have been quite stiff. At that moment, Ezekiel finished his call and saw Bird standing beside Harmony after turning around. Bird was quite intimidatingly handsome, but Ezekiel also gave people that feeling too, but in a different way. Ezekiel's suave and humor easily captured women's hearts Ezekiel suddenly felt a sense of competition. He held his phone, walked over, and wrapped his arm around Harmony's shoulder naturally. She was startled, and when she turned to find that it was Ezekiel, her heart raced. He smiled and said with an imposing presence not inferior to Bird, sorry. Can I have a word with my girlfriend? The emphasis on the words, my girlfriend, was noticeable. Upon seeing Ezekiel, Bird immediately understood that Harmony was with him and also recognized Ezekiel's identity. He quickly said, sorry, I've taken up your girlfriend's time. Harmony waved to him as Ezekiel led her away to the other side. I need to change backstage, she said. Ezekiel took her backstage. Sarah had already witnessed the scene and approached them with a smile. Mr. Weiss, you're here. Sarah, I'm going to change, Harmony said. Sure, I'll go with you, Sarah replied. I'll wait here for you. Ezekiel pulled a chair over and sat down. Harmony and Sarah entered the dressing room. Soon, Harmony changed back into her own dress and removed the accessories. Her long hair tumbled down her shoulders, exuding an enchanting charm. On stage, she was a princess, but at this moment, she resembled an elegant fairy, which captivated Ezekiel. Despite the constant flow of elegant and beautiful girls coming and going around him, he seemed to see only her. Let's have dinner together tonight, Ezekiel said to her. Sure, it's already past 5 p.m. I'll treat you to dinner, Harmony replied. Ezekiel smiled and accepted the gesture. Okay, this meal will be on you. Sarah didn't follow them this time. She felt genuinely happy for Harmony because his actions were evident today he liked Harmony. You cooperated well with Bird on stage. Do you like him? Ezekiel asked directly. Harmony couldn't help feeling a bit flustered. We were just cooperating for work. We're colleagues. He's very handsome, he remarked. She replied boldly, he's not my type. Oh, Ezekiel responded with a meaningful glance at her and then narrowed his eyes to look at her. What type of man do you like? She blinked and then sized him up. I like your type. Ezekiel lightly hummed as he was not too pleased. There's more than one person in the world similar to my type. Harmony chuckled. Now, she could boldly confess. I like you, Mr. Weiss. Yes, she liked not a man of his type, but him. For the first time, she had confessed to a man so boldly. She felt she had to tell him about her feelings as she feared it might be too late. Ezekiel looked satisfied, and there was a hint of boyish shyness on his handsome face. When did you start liking me? He wanted to know. Harmony blushed slightly as she carefully considered and replied, that day, that day when I kissed you in the hotel, I felt like I started to like you. Ezekiel smiled, and his lips were pressed together. It seems we liked each other at the same time. She looked up and asked, did you also start liking me at that time? You were the first girl to kiss me and the first girl I've ever kissed, Ezekiel said. Harmony's heart raced excitedly, she was the first girl he had kissed. How honored she felt. As they stepped out of the main hall, some reporters were still gathered there. Upon seeing Harmony and Ezekiel, they immediately approached. Miss Mayo, can we have a quick interview? Sorry, I can't do an interview right now. Thank you. Harmony declined politely. Miss Mayo, it's just a few questions. It'll be quick. No, thank you, Harmony said before grabbing Ezekiel's hand and walking away. However, the reporter surged forward. She knew these journalists could be persistent, so she grabbed Ezekiel's hand and said, let's run. With that, she pulled him along, and they started running. They dashed across an empty grassy area, her long hair fluttering in the wind as he ran alongside her. It felt like they were abandoning all worldly concerns and eloping. 
The reporters and photographers behind couldn't catch up as they were lugging around their equipment. When Harmony stopped, she was breathless. As she turned, she accidentally bumped into the man's arms, and the two of them ended up tightly pressed against each other. Ezekiel was slightly breathless as he looked at her, and both of them couldn't help but laugh. Harmony felt bold as she stretched out her arms, hugged Ezekiel, and rested against his chest for a moment. May I hug you? She asked. Feel free. His chin rested on her shoulder lightly she hugged him happily. She did not want to let go at that moment, and not ever in this lifetime. Harmony shyly buried her face in his chest until a group of people passed by. Ezekiel continued to hold her while ignoring the stares around them on this lively evening. Upon arriving at the spot where Ezekiel had parked, he was momentarily stunned as he looked at the empty space. Is your car missing? Harmony asked quickly. He sighed. I was in a hurry and didn't park properly. It might have been towed by the traffic police. She felt sorry for him. However, after hearing that he was rushing and hadn't found a parking spot, she wondered if he was in a hurry to come see her. I'll contact Sarah. She probably hasn't left yet. I'll ask her to send us to the restaurant, Harmony suggested. Ezekiel nodded. Okay. He then picked up his phone and instructed the bodyguard to handle his car situation. Soon, Sarah sent a driver to pick them up and take them to a quiet restaurant. While the place was expensive, Harmony didn't mind, she wanted to treat him. Their dinner was delightful. She shared some fun anecdotes from her filming experiences, while he spoke of some of the unusual encounters in his daily life. In the blink of an eye, dinner ended. She paid the bill secretly for fear that Ezekiel might try to do so covertly, so it was better for her to make a move first. During Ezekiel's restroom break, he indeed headed toward the reception to pay. However, when he attempted to settle the bill, the server smiled and said, Miss Mayo has already paid. Ezekiel had no choice but to return to the private room. Harmony caught his eye and looked a bit smug. What's wrong? Did you want to steal my bill? Not tonight. I said I would treat you, so I'm keeping my promise. Ezekiel could only say, okay, the next one's on me. Harmony did not refute either because only that way could they plan for their next meeting. Have you informed your bodyguard to come and pick you up? She asked. I haven't informed them, Ezekiel said, his deep gaze filled with anticipation. Can I return to your place and rest for a while? Filled with surprise, Harmony seemed to have not considered rejecting him or being wary of him. She wanted nothing more than for him to go to her home. However, she nodded gracefully on the surface and said, of course. My place isn't very far from here, and it's easy to hail a cab here. Ezekiel nodded. Okay, let's go to your place then. When they exited the restaurant, the outside had already transformed into a bustling and vibrant night view. The distant skyscrapers seemed particularly magnificent and dazzling, while the shops below exuded a lively atmosphere. Harmony enjoyed such a feeling. She held Ezekiel's wrist and urged, let's go. I booked a cab. It'll be here soon. Allowing her to hold his hand, Ezekiel walked with her to the side of the road, where a driver stopped before them in a while. Then, Harmony opened the car door, letting Ezekiel get in before she did. While the driver was usually good at his job, too many people were outside at night, so he had to slam on the brakes several times and accelerate suddenly. During a sharp turn, Harmony fell directly into Ezekiel's arms. Ezekiel immediately held her tightly in his embrace. In the dimly lit backseat, the two found themselves squished together, but it felt sweet because they rarely had an opportunity to do so. Therefore, while the driver was speeding, he had inadvertently created a perfect chance for the two in the back to cuddle. Harmony's face must be flushed because she could feel it burning. Although she often had physical contact with male actors during filming, she usually didn't feel anything. However, for some reason, she felt her body suddenly warming up after falling into Ezekiel's embrace. Is it because of the pleasant musky fragrance on him, or is it the captivating masculine scent? At last, the driver managed to get Harmony home in just 15 minutes, which she felt reluctant about. She had never wished that the driver would take a longer route, but this time, she truly wished the driver would have intentionally taken a longer detour. 
After Harmony paid the fare, the driver couldn't help but ask in surprise, are you that actress? That rendered her slightly embarrassed as she was not expecting to be recognized. She smiled without responding, and the driver left. Seeing Ezekiel tidying his somewhat disheveled shirt and collar on the side, Harmony couldn't help but smile when she recalled she had been clutching his shirt just now. Do you need my help? Harmony stood in front of him and asked. Ezekiel curved up his lips. Sure, help me tidy up. Harmony straightened out his shirt and offered shyly, let's go back to my place. Inside the elevator, Harmony felt her heart racing. The last time they had a meal together was during the day, but inviting him to her home at night felt somehow more flirtatious. As Harmony stepped out of the elevator, she suddenly saw a figure leaning against the wall next to her door it was Reuben. He was standing there with a bouquet of flowers and a gift in his hands. Upon hearing the elevator arriving, Reuben couldn't help but feel giddy. However, a wave of jealousy surged within him when he saw Harmony walking toward him with another man by her side. What are you doing here? Harmony asked angrily. Harmony, I'm just here to congratulate you. That's it. Reuben tried to conceal his desire to get back together with Harmony. That's not necessary. Please leave and don't bother me and my boyfriend. You're spoiling our mood, Harmony retorted and held Ezekiel's wrist, declaring the latter was her boyfriend. In the meantime, Ezekiel also gave Reuben a warning gaze. Reuben's discontent and jealousy made his expression look unpleasant. When he saw Harmony holding Ezekiel's hand, he suddenly had a mad idea to get back at Harmony. Mr. Weiss, I know you're very wealthy and successful, so you don't lack women to choose from. Why do you need to pick up a woman I dumped? Reuben's words elevated Ezekiel's status and mocked Harmony at the same time. Harmony looked furious. Shut up, Reuben. I can do that, but the truth will always be the truth. You're a woman I previously used, and I'm worried Mr. Weiss might find you dirty, Reuben replied. Reuben, we didn't even, stop talking nonsense, Harmony retorted. As Reuben was determined to make Ezekiel misunderstand their relationship, he insisted, Harmony, have you forgotten? We were at your place, and you seduced me. Later, we spent three whole days together in bed. Reuben turned to Ezekiel and said, Mr. Weiss, are you sure you don't care about that? You can find a woman a hundred times better than her. A woman like her is not worthy of you. Harmony's eyes welled up with tears, and she turned to look at Ezekiel, hoping he wouldn't believe Reuben's lies. At the same time, she subconsciously released her grip on Ezekiel's arm. The latter knew she and Reuben were former lovers, and who in this era would believe that she was still a virgin after dating a guy for five years. Upon seeing Harmony even refraining from holding Ezekiel's hand, Reuben felt happy and sighed. He was about to reach his goal. Ezekiel would surely feel disgusted by her. However, a large hand gently held Harmony's waist. Then, she heard Ezekiel's deep and powerful voice. An outsider like you has no right to criticize whether Harmony is worthy of me or not. I like Harmony, regardless of her past. Harmony lifted her head in surprise and looked at Ezekiel with disbelief. From his determined gaze, she felt like she was shrouded and saved by a beam of warm sunshine. Mr. Weiss, does she have anything that's worth liking? She's just an ordinary woman without any talents. Even I don't find her appealing. Reuben couldn't help but mock her with a look of disdain in his eyes. Upon hearing such disrespectful remarks targeted at women, Ezekiel furrowed his eyebrows and stared coldly at Reuben. Superficial men like you are unworthy of even appreciating her beauty. The counterattack silenced Reuben. He grunted before throwing the bouquet to the ground, even stomping on them. Harmony Mayo, I spent a few hundred to buy flowers for you. Get lost and never show up at my house again, or I'll call the police, Harmony warned angrily. Reuben's face turned even gloomier. When he passed by the two, he heard Ezekiel's voice trailing after him. If you don't want to die, then don't disturb her ever again. Reuben suddenly shivered. On ordinary days, he would have retorted if a man had threatened him. However, Ezekiel's voice sent chills down his spine because that man did have such capabilities. With that, Reuben fled to the elevator. The appearance of that SC asterisk MBAG had entirely ruined Harmony's good mood for the night. 
Moreover, the words he spoke just now had caused her great harm. Even though Ezekiel firmly believed and supported her, she still couldn't recover from how bad Reuben made her feel. Pushing the door open, Harmony headed toward the fridge like a child who had done something wrong. She took out two bottles of water and said to Ezekiel, Mr. Weiss, do you want to call your bodyguards and have them come to pick you up? Ezekiel fixed his deep gaze on her, noticing her bad mood. He took the water and replied, I don't feel like leaving yet. It's late. You should head home and rest, Harmony said, looking up at him. Ezekiel sat on her couch. Don't kick me out. I want to stay here. I'm sorry, Harmony apologized instinctively for the displeasing incident with Reuben just now. Putting his water down, Ezekiel approached her and placed both hands on her shoulders while comforting her with his deep voice, Harmony, you didn't do anything wrong, so you don't need to apologize to anyone. Just be yourself and ignore what others say. Those words of comfort were just what Harmony needed at this moment. Tears suddenly filled her eyes as she threw herself into Ezekiel's arms. Right now, she just wanted to cry out loud. She was grateful to have met him and regretted not seeing Reuben's true nature back then. He was a bad person. Ezekiel was like a comforting flame. He gently patted her and gave her warmth and strength. After crying for a while, she understood that she had done nothing wrong and she didn't need to care about Reuben's hurtful words. She just had to be herself. However, her fear was that Ezekiel might have believed in Reuben's lies and that she would lose him. Please don't believe what Reuben said just now. We haven't crossed that line since the day we got together. I, Harmony found it difficult to continue because it was difficult for her to bring up such matters with the man she liked. Meanwhile, Ezekiel also knew she was not good at explaining such things, so he cupped her face gently and wiped away her tears with his thumb. I trust you. He had already learned about all this since he accidentally answered Reuben's call the other day. Ezekiel was brought up in an open-minded family, so when choosing a woman to be with, he wouldn't care about her past. Instead, he would imagine what their future would be like. Upon hearing that he trusted her, Harmony was so elated that she started shedding tears again. She tightly pressed her lips together, feeling grateful like never before because no one had ever shown her such unconditional trust. Stop crying, or your eyes will swell. Ezekiel grabbed some tissues from the table and gently wiped away her tears. Her eyes looked beautiful whenever she smiled. He wanted to see her happy, not sad. She pursed her lips and smiled. However, the smile in her teary eyes made her look quite pitiful. Suddenly feeling his heart fluttering, Ezekiel couldn't hold back from leaning down to kiss her red, soft lips. That instantly stunned Harmony. Their last kiss was at the hotel, where she had summoned all her courage to kiss him. Unexpectedly, he initiated the kiss this time, rendering her shy and at a loss for how to react. After kissing her, Ezekiel tenderly gazed at her. Can I stay the night? They said men craved a woman, but who said that women didn't crave men? At least, Harmony did. If I say yes, would you think I'm unreserved for allowing a man to stay the night? She raised her head and asked him in a foolish but adorable way. Ezekiel chuckled. No, because I'm the man who is going to stay here tonight. Laughing, Harmony threw herself into his arms. Right then, the negative emotions Reuben brought up in her had disappeared entirely. That was because the man before her had a healing presence. It was like he could soothe her sufferings and teach her to become someone with a stable temper. At that moment, Ezekiel's phone rang. He picked it up and walked toward the balcony. Hello, Miles. My dear Mr. Weiss, where are you now? Why was your car impounded by the traffic police? Are you okay? How am I going to explain things to your parents if something happens to you? Miles' anxious voice came through the phone. I'm fine. I'm not going back to the hotel tonight. Wow, where will you be staying tonight? Miles asked from the other end. It was fortunate that Ezekiel was in a good mood. On usual days, Miles would be reprimanded if he dared to inquire about Ezekiel's private life, but today, Ezekiel responded, Anyway, don't disturb me tonight, no matter what it is. Even if the company goes bankrupt. Then, let it be, Ezekiel answered and hung up the phone. On the other end of the phone, Miles understood that he was not to disturb Ezekiel, even if the world was about to explode. 
This must be Miss Mayo, the one he fell in love with at first sight. Since Harmony didn't plan for guest rooms when she designed this house, she only had one bedroom in the house. Then, there was the lounge and couch. She was an adult, so she knew where Ezekiel would be sleeping tonight. It was 9.30. She raised her head and saw Ezekiel holding the bottle of water and drinking on the balcony. A beam of light shone upon him. She stared at his sexy jawline and his bobbing Adam's apple as he gulped the water down, and she turned red. Ezekiel had a mysterious air about him. The regal air he exuded would make any woman fall for him. Why don't you take a bath? Harmony asked. She had to take care of him. Ezekiel nodded. Sure, I'll be using the bathroom, then. Call your assistant and have him take your clothes here, said Harmony. She didn't have any clothes he could wear here, save for a piece of towel. Ezekiel smiled. I'll tell them to do it tomorrow morning. Harmony was too shy to even look him in the eye. She nodded. I've warmed up the water. Get in. You can use my towel. I have two of them. Ezekiel put the empty bottle down. His throat was parched, so he finished a whole bottle of water in one go. After he went into the bathroom, Harmony felt her heart leaping out of her chest. She was nervous about what was going to happen later, but she was excited and looking forward to it as well. She could even imagine how it would go. Harmony rested her head in her hands, wondering who she should share this delight with, but she couldn't do it. She didn't have the courage to, so she reveled in delight herself. Harmony kept swimming in her thoughts, and twenty minutes went by. She didn't even hear the sound of water stop. When she heard the bathroom door click open, she turned around, and what she saw stunned her. A perfectly sculpted male was standing before her. Even though he had a pink towel around his lower body, it didn't get in the way of his masculine air. Harmony gulped. She was helpless when it came to liking Ezekiel she fell for his looks, his body, and everything else. Ezekiel smiled at her, happy with the looks of awe she was giving him. As Harmony stared at Ezekiel, he approached her. Harmony's breathing became ragged, but she was captivated, and she stood up to go to him. The air was getting hot and heavy thanks to Ezekiel's existence, and then Harmony smelled the scent of shampoo coming off Ezekiel. Oh, I haven't bathed. She smiled and took a step back. I'll have to get showered. Yet, Ezekiel wouldn't let her go. He put his arm around her waist and pulled her into his embrace. Hoarsely, he said, I don't mind. She was beautiful and smelled nice enough for him. Harmony didn't share his thoughts. Adamantly, she said, I want to bathe. She was beautiful as she was, but she wanted to remove her makeup before getting close to Ezekiel. He felt really clean after the bath. Ezekiel let her go. While Harmony went to the bedroom to get her pajamas, Ezekiel's eyes were still on her. She was the only thing in his eye. Nothing else around him mattered. Harmony went into the bathroom, holding her chest as her heart raced. She thought she was like someone deserting a battlefield, and that thought amused her. She used to think she would do it with him naturally and elegantly, like a princess, but she was actually panicking. Harmony washed her face and even wanted to wash her hair, but it was too late, so she took a shower instead. Just thinking about the person waiting for her outside made Harmony feel sheepish. Her body was claimed to be perfectly sculpted as well. She was born with it. Her waist was slim, and her legs were slender, but she was busty and curvy. Her skin was fair, too. She was what every man dreamed of. After the shower, Harmony took a sky-blue towel out of the cabinet. She looked at the pajamas and thought she shouldn't let them get in the way. Just get straight to the point. We're adults now. I've never thought I would get this far, and he helped me a lot, so sleeping with him is fine. He's not married, and neither am I. We won't get into any scandals. A sheepish Harmony opened the door, and Ezekiel was stunned by what he saw. He knew Harmony had a smoking hot body, but when he saw her standing before him wearing nothing but a towel, he was still stunned. He thought that this was God's gift for him. After he took it, he would treasure and protect it well. Harmony approached Ezekiel slowly. To him, she shone bright like a ball of flames. Should we have something to drink? Harmony asked. She thought the night was still young. Ezekiel had approached her, however, and he held her head in his hand. Hoarsely, he chuckled. I've been waiting for too long, and I'm done with it. 
He kissed her. It was a gentle kiss at first, but then it turned intense. Somehow, Harmony and he moved to the bedroom, and somehow, everything went dark. She could feel his scent surrounding her, and she couldn't wait for what was going to happen next. The room was dark, and Ezekiel's kiss melted her. He held her slim waist in his hand, and it moved like waves. He held her like she was a treasure. Harmony's mind was blank. All she could feel was Ezekiel's scent. Nothing else registered. The mind-blowing ecstasy captivated her. It was as if this was the most pleasurable thing in the world. Midnight came, and the couple fell asleep in each other's embrace. Harmony didn't even dream that night as she was too exhausted. All she wanted to do was rest. Silvery moonlight rained into the room. Ezekiel looked at Harmony gently. He leaned down and kissed her lips lovingly. Even after that, he refused to sleep. He held himself up by his elbows, staring at Harmony in admiration. Harmony had no idea that Ezekiel was watching her like she was a precious little baby, and like she was the most beautiful work of art in the world. Harmony was gorgeous when she was asleep. She looked regal and young and perfect. Ezekiel got out of bed. He wanted to use the bathroom, but when he lifted the blanket, he saw a patch of red on the bed. He stopped breathing for a few moments and heaved a sigh, frowning in guilt. I was going at it a bit too strong earlier. It was her first time. Morning came, and Harmony opened her eyes groggily. The first thing she saw was a healthily tanned pex. It felt warm and sturdy, and she turned red. Memories of what happened last night came flooding into her head, but her lips curled up. Her eyes shone, as if she was a cat that managed to steal a fish it had always wanted to nibble on. Cheekily, she extended her hand and touched Ezekiel's pecs, trying to see how hard they were. Not too long after she started poking them, Ezekiel stared down at her in her hand like a languid, majestic beast that had woken from its slumber. Harmony met his eyes and turned around sheepishly, facing him with her naked back. That just made things more awkward. Ezekiel had woken up completely, and now something else had woken up completely as well. I I can't. I can't take it anymore, Harmony refused. Ezekiel pulled her into his embrace and chuckled. Sure, but you're staying in bed with me for a little while longer. I can't sleep, said Harmony. How could she, when they were stark naked? Just then, Harmony's phone rang. It was in the lounge. She said, I'll need to take the call. She picked up the towel she had left aside and covered herself with it. Her hair was messy, and her skin glittered under the sun. Ezekiel stared. She's so beautiful, but she doesn't know it. Harmony went and took the call. It was from Sarah. Hey, Sarah. I'm outside your house. What would you want for breakfast? I can get some for you. And brought the script here. We can talk about it. You're outside, Sarah. Um, I don't feel so good. Can we talk about the script later in the afternoon? Unwell, Sarah mused. But it's not your period yet. Are you down with a cold? No, I, before Harmony could say anything, Sarah knew what was going on. Don't tell me Mr. Weiss is still at your house. Harmony felt resigned. I can't hide anything from her. She nodded. Yes, he's still asleep. You ate good, girl. Sarah was jealous. Harmony said nothing, but she was red as an apple. She hung up and looked back at the man in the bedroom. Ezekiel was seated on the bed, folding the blanket. His upper body was revealed, and it looked as captivating as ever. She wanted to pounce into his embrace once more. Since Sarah wasn't coming, and Harmony didn't want to do anything all day. Harmony quickly went into the bedroom and threw herself into Ezekiel's arms. Ezekiel was stunned to see her coming in wearing nothing but a towel, but he opened his arms wide and pulled her into his embrace. Harmony wrapped her arms around his neck. This was so blissful it felt like a dream. Harmony was as gentle as a kitten. Happy, Ezekiel kissed her head. I thought you said you didn't want it anymore, so what's with this? He chuckled. Harmony pulled the blanket back and scurried into his arms. I want to hang around you. Back in a hotel, an elderly man was looking closely at the woman who was led into his room. He was observing her face very closely, as if he was picking an item he wanted to use. This isn't bad. Like the type Mr. Weiss has taken a liking to. From what we know, the celebrity he's been courting is the innocent type. I'm sure he'll be interested in the lady we picked. 
The elderly man was Derek Gufferson. Weiss Group was his biggest client, but because of a mistake he made in the past, Ezekiel stopped collaborating with him. Now, he wanted to strike a deal with Ezekiel again. Since he wanted to butter Ezekiel up, he had to give him something he liked. His men found out that Ezekiel had taken an interest in a certain female celebrity as of late. That also meant Derek knew what Ezekiel liked. That was why he wanted to get Ezekiel a plaything in the form of a female celebrity. That would make it easier for negotiations next time since Derek had done Ezekiel a favor. Take this girl to him and get her to approach Ezekiel and gain his attention. Yes, Samantha Leiderman was in the waiting room beside Derek's room. She was a B-lister who played many smaller roles, but she hadn't had her big break. That was why her manager would take jobs for her on the side jobs like seducing rich boys. This time, Samantha would do the same thing again, but she would gain a million and a half from this. It was more than what she had gotten in any other deal. Chapter 2731 Just then, an assistant came into the room and showed Samantha a file. He then handed her a picture. When Samantha saw the man in the picture, she was stunned. This is your target this time, Ms. Leiterman. His name is Ezekiel Weiss, and he's the heir to Dansbury's Weiss group. All you have to do is sleep with him for a few nights. Samantha was filled with ecstasy. She wouldn't be satisfied with just sleeping with a guy like this for a few nights. She would make him hers and marry him. Then, she would live a life of opulence other than having a handsome husband by her side. Making men mine is what I do best. I'll get it done, don't you worry. The assistant held up another picture. This is Mr. Weiss' girlfriend. You should know her. Samantha picked up the photo. Surprised, she said, Harmony. She's his girlfriend. Looks like our intel is right. Are you good friends with Harmony? Samantha didn't expect Ezekiel's girlfriend to be Harmony. She and Harmony were roommates all through university, and they cared for each other. However, ever since Samantha entered the entertainment industry, her ambition grew. She used all her connections to climb higher, and eventually, she was in a different circle from Harmony. Even though they were in the industry, it had been years since they met. We used to be good friends, but I got busy, and we didn't have the same circle of friends, so we drifted apart. She's just a nameless actress. How did she get to date Mr. Weiss? Samantha was shocked. She had just came back from sleeping with another rich guy abroad, so she had no idea what happened back home. You wouldn't feel guilty stealing your best friend's boyfriend, would you? The assistant asked. Samantha was nonchalant. I've betrayed everything for money. I'd steal my own sister's husband if I had to, let alone my friend's boyfriend. And besides, it's just seducing a guy. I'm better than Harmony at this. I know things she doesn't, and I have more resources and connections than Harmony. Not to mention, they're giving me the chance to snag a great man. No way I'll let this go. Then we're counting on you. Make him yours and hook him up with our boss. Do that, and you make one and a half million. Sure, you can count on me, said Samantha. She had blocked Harmony's number before, but it was time to unblock her. When Samantha went back to her car and searched for Harmony's name, she was shocked. What? She got so many awards. And she had a role in a big production like The End of Times. There were also pictures of Harmony and Ezekiel on the internet. Seeing Harmony alone with a man like Ezekiel filled Samantha with jealousy. She's not worthy of a guy like Ezekiel. I did everything over all these years to get to where I am, but all you had to do was seduce one man, and you get everything. That afternoon, Ezekiel took Harmony to an upscale restaurant. The active night had left Harmony famished. Ezekiel watched as she gobbled everything down, and his eyes were filled with love. Ezekiel's phone rang. He picked it up and took a look. Yes, Mom. I have to go back to your dad. Do you want to come with me? Ezekiel's mother asked. I'll stay here for a bit, Mom. You go home first. Sure. I'll be going to the airport after I take your grandma back. You spend some time with her. I know, Mom. Ezekiel was reminded of a certain thing he wanted to say, but he held it back. He and Harmony had just started dating. Once they were stable, he would take her to see his family. Harmony saw him hanging up, and she asked, Are you leaving? 
Ezekiel shook his head. I'll be staying here for a while longer. Harmony didn't ask for much. She would just take every day as it came. After all, she had planned her life out she would do her best in her career and spend time with the people she loved. She wouldn't force a marriage if it wasn't meant to be. Sure, tell me if you have to leave. I won't get worried that way, Harmony said seriously. I won't leave. I can't leave. Ezekiel looked at her, his eyes filled with a hidden message, which Harmony knew. She smiled as well. She didn't want him to leave either. That afternoon, Ezekiel took Harmony home. After Harmony got out of the car and saw Ezekiel off, she bought some pills from the nearby pharmacy. She didn't want to get pregnant for the time being, nor did she want to cause any trouble for Ezekiel. While they were enjoying their alone time, she had to keep herself healthy too. As Harmony came back to her neighborhood, someone called out to her. Harmony, it's really you. Surprised, Harmony looked at the girl coming out of the car. She couldn't recognize her. Samantha. It's me. Long time no see. Samantha gave her a big smile. She pulled her shirt up a little. You live here. I just moved here too. You moved here. Harmony was surprised. That's a coincidence. Yeah, I rented a place here yesterday. Which floor are you on? 18th floor of building 8, unit 2. What about you? Samantha put on a look of surprise. What? We're on the same floor in the same building. Whoa. Harmony was surprised. That's a coincidence. Don't tell me you rented the place beside mine. My god, this must be fate. We're neighbors now. Samantha smiled. This was her plan. She convinced the landlord of the house beside Harmony's to let her stay for a month. Her plan was to steal Ezekiel from Harmony. Harmony didn't think her friend would get close to her just to take her boyfriend away. She thought this was just a coincidence. When they reached the 18th floor, Samantha asked, Can I see your place? I just moved here, and it's lonely without friends. Sure, but my place is a mess. I hope you don't mind. I won't. Samantha smiled. She walked into Harmony's house. It wasn't messy, and she could see that Harmony's quality of life was high. She then saw a pair of men's slippers on the ground. She pretended not to see it, but her heart leapt with joy. I knew Mr. Weiss would come to her place. Which means I can show up when he comes. She had other ideas on how to get close to Ezekiel, but the best way was to approach him as Harmony's friend. Men are playboys, and they're reedy too. I might be able to seduce him easily. She had stolen a lot of her friend's boyfriends before, and she came up with a whole thesis for it. No man can resist a woman going after them, and they get more thrill messing with other women in front of their girlfriends. Harmony and Samantha sat down and talked about their lives. They also reminisced about their days at school. The friendship scorned by Samantha was now used as a chip to get closer to Harmony. I miss our days at school. We were all so young and innocent. And we were the Madonnas of the school. Remember how those boys looked at us when we went around the campus? Samantha asked. Harmony smiled. I don't. They looked at us like they were going to eat us, Samantha replied smugly. She didn't think she would lose to Harmony in terms of looks, especially after she had gone through plastic surgery. I'll leave you to it, Harmony. We'll watch each other's backs from now on, all right? Samantha got up. Sure, come to me if you need anything. Harmony smiled and sent Samantha off. After that, it was time to meet Sarah. Sarah came over a while later. When she heard that Samantha moved in next door, her first instinct was to tell Harmony, whenever Mr. Weiss comes over, don't let her in. Something twinkled in Harmony's eyes. Even without Sarah's reminder, she was already on guard. Why did she move in next door all of a sudden? There were some stories about her relationship with Ezekiel on the internet, so everyone knew she only had all these resources because Ezekiel was backing her. It wasn't uncommon for people in the entertainment industry to get free resources from their friends or outright steal the other entertainer's sponsors. Harmony was on guard, of course. I know. Harmony nodded. Unless Ezekiel himself said he would give up on her, Harmony wouldn't let anyone take him away from her. Samantha was back in her home. She had asked someone to install hidden cameras outside the door so she could see the people coming from the elevator. The moment Ezekiel appeared, she would know right away. 
Her assistant was responsible for keeping watch and keeping a close eye on things in this vicinity 24-7. Samantha was on her couch, her mind occupied by one thing. She was holding a photo of Ezekiel in her hand. He was dashing, handsome, and regal. This man was the perfect husband Samantha always wanted. The other rich guys were married, so she could never be their wife, but men like Ezekiel were her real targets. If Harmony could attract him, then so could she. She was confident about that. Samantha went to the mirror in the bathroom and turned on the lights. She looked at her beautiful face and smoking hot body, thinking that she could get any man she wanted. All she could do now was wait. Once Ezekiel came, she would visit Harmony and create a chance encounter. She was experienced in the art of seduction. Harmony and Sarah were talking about the next script. Harmony was a workaholic, and she would never stop going forward. She wanted to gain success and more awards and recognition. This is a good script. The most you'll do with the male lead is hug, and the movie showcases positive values, too. You're a cop, so it'll be different from what you've been doing. Harmony took the script and had a look. The silent suspect. She nodded. I'll finish this as soon as possible. Do your best. We have to propel you to fame this time, Sarah encouraged. Before she left, she said, don't let Samantha come in unless absolutely necessary. She might have some ulterior motives she's not telling you. Maybe she's someone your enemy sent to deal with you. Harmony nodded. I know. I'll keep an eye out. Once Sarah was gone, Harmony plopped down on the couch and read the script. Even though she had started dating Ezekiel and gone to fourth base, she wasn't love-addled and could still focus on work. In the evening, Harmony's phone rang. She picked it up and smiled sweetly. Hey, done with work. Yep, come over to my place tonight, Ezekiel said as if pleading. Harmony mused over it. Sure, I'll pack some clothes. I'll pick you up. I can get a ride. I'm worried for your safety, Ezekiel insisted. Sure, text me when you're almost at my place. I'll meet up with you. Harmony felt sweet. She was happy her boyfriend was picking her up. Twenty minutes later, she received Ezekiel's text. He was almost here. Harmony quickly got up and packed her clothes. She only took a couple of sets of clothes before leaving. Meanwhile, Samantha saw Harmony leave. She was sitting before her computer, watching Harmony get into the elevator with a suitcase. Where is she going? She can't be going on a vacation with Ezekiel, can she? The assistant hiding outside the apartment saw Harmony getting into one of the luxury cars in the motorcade. He followed the motorcade and saw them going into a seven-star hotel. Samantha was jealous when she heard that. Is she going to stay there for a few days? Get me a room in that hotel too. I'm going to create a chance encounter there. Samantha smiled confidently. I can surely find a way to get close to Ezekiel. Harmony got out of the car with Ezekiel. Ezekiel held her suitcase, and they went into the elevator. Just a night ago, Ezekiel was railing her crazily in bed, and now he was looking like a gentleman. She started getting a mischievous idea. She wanted to tear his facade away and turn him into the beast he was the night before. The bodyguards escorted them to the hotel room. Ezekiel opened the door for Harmony to go inside before following her. When the door was closed, Ezekiel pulled Harmony into his embrace before pinning her against the cabinet beside them. Ezekiel started to kiss her intensely. Harmony couldn't hold it in anymore. Her head was spinning. She could feel his hand around her waist as he picked her up. Ah, so I wasn't the only one with this crazy idea. The kiss went on until the couple was breathing heavily. Harmony couldn't meet Ezekiel's passionate eyes as she was worried that he might turn into a beast. I it's still early. We can do this later, Harmony whispered. She wasn't picky about the time, but this was an inappropriate moment. Ezekiel chuckled and pressed his forehead against hers. It's more exciting at night. Harmony nodded, blushing. Yeah, Ezekiel was going mad with desire, too. After that night, he couldn't even focus on working as all he could think of was Harmony. If it weren't for necessary work, he would have picked her up sooner. She was like some kind of drug that he was addicted to. Just then, his phone rang. Ezekiel picked up his phone and sighed. This is never going to end. It's about work. Yeah, Harmony pushed him away. Go deal with it. Just ignore me. 
Ezekiel stroked Harmony's hair, I'll keep an eye on you for life. It was sweet that he made a promise for life. Harmony's face turned redder, you're keeping an eye on me for life. Yes, Ezekiel replied adamantly. Harmony uttered, you don't even know me well. I haven't even shown you my flaws. Ezekiel looked at her, smiling lovingly. Show me everything, I can take it. Harmony chuckled, but she said solemnly, sure, let's take time to know each other, but if you ever find a side of me that you don't like, you can cut me loose. Ezekiel felt his heart squeezing up, and he went ahead to pull her into his embrace. I'll never cut you loose, he whispered. The last one who confessed to her in the same manner was Reuben. He told her all the romantic stuff this world had to offer, but in the end, the relationship was a tragedy. Harmony was always cool and rational about love. Even if it was Ezekiel saying this, she couldn't take it seriously, or she would lose everything. Sure, get back to work. Harmony smiled, pushing him away. Ezekiel could feel Harmony keeping a distance between them. Even though they had skinship and given each other their bodies, he still couldn't get close to her soul that easily. Her ex-boyfriend broke her heart, so she was afraid of falling in love again, but Ezekiel was determined to prove that he was not the same guy as that ex of hers through his actions. He wasn't in any hurry. They had a long future ahead of them. She would eventually know how sincere he was. Ezekiel went into the study and held an online conference. Harmony stood on the balcony, quietly going through her script. She even had the original novel with her. She had to finish this whole thing quickly and meet up with the director. It was her wish to get into the set and start the shooting soon. Immersed in her work, Harmony didn't realize Ezekiel had come out of the study. He saw her standing on the balcony, the sun shining on her. She was glimmering, and even her hair was shining. She was as gorgeous as an oil painting. A scenery to be enjoyed. Ezekiel didn't want to disturb her, but he was attracted to her. Slowly, he went up to her and leaned down. He put an arm around her shoulder from behind, kissing her hair. Harmony's train of thought was broken. She looked up at Ezekiel, and then his lips pressed against hers. It was a flirty kiss, and her breathing became ragged, but he kept nibbling on her lips as if he were enjoying it. Her heart started to race, and she melted in his arms. The script fell from her hands and landed on the rug with a thud. Ezekiel chuckled. He loved her response. Embarrassed, Harmony picked up the script, but Ezekiel picked her up in a princess carry. She gasped and quickly put an arm around him. When she saw the desire flaring in his eyes, she went red. Guess I can't delay this until night. Ezekiel's gaze told her that he wanted to relive last night's moment. She couldn't resist that, she wanted to relive the moment, too. Any woman would love to do it if they had a boyfriend like this. Ezekiel was sensitive about her feelings, however. He pulled the curtains shut, and the room was plunged into darkness akin to nighttime. Harmony still felt embarrassed. She'd never had this kind of, explicit life before. They went at it from five to seven. Harmony was always lying on Ezekiel's body, her hair draped over his chest, and her cheeks were flushed. Ezekiel combed her hair. They were both drenched in sweat. Ezekiel said, I'll fill the tub up. You get into the bathroom later. Harmony nodded. She was so exhausted she didn't want to move. Once Ezekiel was done filling the tub, he went into the room and picked the naked Harmony up. Then he put her in the water. Harmony was so embarrassed she couldn't even look anyone in the eye. Fortunately, Ezekiel was the only one around. He took a shower under the showerhead beside the tub, then he wrapped himself with a towel and came over to wash Harmony's hair. She let him clean her hair. This was a luxury service. Harmony's hair was washed, and she had a soothing bath. That washed away her soreness. She got up, and her body had marks left by Ezekiel. Worried, Ezekiel huddled closer. Does it hurt? No. Harmony shook her head sheepishly. She had no time to care about that earlier, and Ezekiel only went at it harder. He didn't mean to, and these marks would disappear in a few days. Dry your hair. I'll take you out for dinner, said Ezekiel. Harmony nodded. She was hungry. Ezekiel was a meticulous boyfriend. He only took her to the walk-in closet after he dried her hair. She changed into a dress and went out with him. Here, she didn't have to hide their relationship. She wanted to tell everyone they were dating. 
Samantha had a few spies installed here. Once Harmony and Ezekiel came out of the elevator, they told Samantha where the couple was going. Samantha was in her room. She quickly got into the bathroom and reapplied some makeup, then she checked herself closely. Once she was happy with how she looked, she picked up her bag and went out to create a chance encounter at the restaurant. In Samantha's eyes, Harmony was still a naive woman, so she would never see through the act. Right after Harmony and Ezekiel sat down, Samantha came in, scrolling through her phone. She didn't say hi on purpose, as if she was waiting for someone else. Harmony saw her right away, and she was shocked. Why'd I run into her so much these past couple of days? She didn't call out to her, however. Angrily, Samantha made a call. Why aren't you here yet? Are you standing me up again? I can't believe this. Samantha was an actress. If she wanted to act, she could make it convincing. However, Harmony was also an actress, so she knew Samantha was acting. She could feel Samantha furtively glancing at them twice. She didn't turn around, but she knew that Samantha knew she and Ezekiel were there. Her instinct was always sharp when it came to this. After Samantha yelled at the guy on the other end of the phone, she picked up her bag and was about to leave, but then she, saw, Harmony, surprised, she said, Harmony. My gosh, you're here too. Harmony really didn't want to catch up with Samantha at this moment, but out of courtesy, she said, yes. I'm having dinner with a friend. Samantha cutely said, man, my friend stood me up. I'm starving. Mind if I join you guys? Having dinner alone is lonely. She turned to Ezekiel, and her pupils contracted. He was more awe-inspiring in real life than he was in the photo. Just when Samantha thought Harmony wouldn't refuse, Harmony refused, sorry, but my friend doesn't like having dinners with strangers. Harmony looked at her apologetically. Samantha quickly asked Ezekiel, Sir, do you mind if I join you two for dinner? If he agrees, Harmony will agree. The moment Ezekiel met Samantha's gaze, he knew the kind of woman she was. Coldly, he said, Yes, I mind. Samantha smiled awkwardly. She looked at Harmony, hoping she would let her stay. Harmony would not. She saw through Samantha. She's creating this chance encounter for one reason, to get to know Ezekiel through me. She's not getting that. Sorry, Sam. Next time, dinner's on me, though, said Harmony. Samantha was frustrated. She's not even giving me a chance. Suddenly, she saw the hickeys on Harmony's neck, and then she noticed how glowing Harmony was looking. She must have done it with him. Jealousy flared in her heart, but she knew she had to leave. I'll be going, then. You enjoy your dinner. Harmony heaved a sigh of relief after Samantha left. She said, she's my classmate back in the film academy. Ezekiel saw through Samantha right away. She came here for him. He was happy Harmony refused the request of a scheming woman like that. She would disturb their dinner otherwise. Bird's nest was served, and Ezekiel pushed it over to her. Here, have this. You'll need to replenish your strength. Harmony blushed. You're the one who wrung me dry. Samantha watched the couple through the window, biting her lip angrily. She couldn't believe Harmony did not act as anticipated. She thought Harmony would be as docile as she used to be. But she's picked up a trick or two over the years. Samantha wouldn't give up just like that, however. She would still try to approach Ezekiel. Once she made that man hers, she would brag to Harmony. After dinner, Harmony and Ezekiel had a stroll around. Samantha's spies followed them. They would inform Samantha once Ezekiel was alone. Harmony's phone rang. It was Sarah, so she took the call. Hey, Sarah. Someone took a photo of you going to the hotel. The media's making up stories now. You're with Mr. Weiss, aren't you? Harmony was surprised. Which news outlet posted that? Not sure. They followed you since you left home all the way to the Manson Hotel. Why didn't you disguise yourself before you came out? Harmony frowned. She wasn't that famous. The media wouldn't stake out at her place. Then she realized that Samantha had shown up here all of a sudden. Obviously, Samantha followed her. She's like a shark. A little drop of profit, and she follows it everywhere. She had seen scandals about Samantha online before. There was only one creed she followed, hound all the rich people. Now, she was sure Samantha came for Ezekiel. 
First, she rented the place beside Harmony's, and now she followed Harmony. And as if that's not enough, she posted the story online. The sliver of friendship she had for Samantha was gone. She would never let a scheming snake hide around her. Sarah, see if you can deal with this. If you can't, it's all right. I don't have to hide the fact I'm dating Ezekiel, said Harmony. Ooh, calling him by his first name. Sarah chuckled. Harmony blushed. Can't call him Mr. Weiss all the time. I know. Broke a certain base now, so you're changing how you call him. Sarah smiled. Harmony hung up, smiling. Ezekiel put his arms around her waist and rested his chin on her shoulder. Look ahead. Harmony looked at the billboard ahead. It was playing the jewelry ad she starred in. Ezekiel said, you know, I stopped for a long time in Monsant just to watch this ad. Surprised, Harmony turned around, and her lips brushed his cheek, though she was in too much of a shock to register that. We didn't even know each other back then. We only met once at the hotel. Do you believe in love at first sight? I never did, but now I do, said Ezekiel honestly. He fell in love with Harmony at first sight. She had occupied his heart the moment he saw her. He was stunned by her tearful eyes when he saw her at the airport. The kiss she gave him at the hotel made his heart flutter. When he saw her on the billboard, it awed him. And then, following his heart, he found her. Harmony blinked. This was the first time Ezekiel spoke of his feelings for her. So he fell in love with me at first sight. Really, Harmony didn't believe it. Yeah, I'm lucky to have met you. And I know fate led us to each other. I will buy that gemstone for you, said Ezekiel. Harmony quickly turned around. No, that gemstone costs more than a million. Don't buy it, it's too expensive. Ezekiel smiled. No, that's our token of love. I cannot let anyone else buy it. What if someone else did buy it? Asked Harmony. Ezekiel's eyes were filled with confidence. I can take it back for you. Harmony felt sweet. She knew she didn't have to be worried about any money problems for him, but she was touched by the thought. She wrapped her arms around Ezekiel and leaned her head on his chest. I'm glad I met you. You gave me everything I have. Ezekiel kissed Harmony's hair. What's mine is yours. Harmony shut her eyes. No, I don't want much. This is good. This is good enough. I'll use the chance he gave me to be better. One of Samantha's assistants was recording nearby, and they sent the video to her. Samantha was on the couch, watching the loving scene. Her soul was filled with jealousy. Why can she make a rich, handsome guy like him fall for her? Whatever you can do, Harmony, I can do it too. Just you wait. I'll steal him away from you, said Samantha confidently. Later that night, Harmony and Ezekiel came back to their room. Ezekiel went to work while Harmony went through her script. She was engrossed in the script. It was an interesting one, and the female lead was a challenging character to play. She was dashing and heroic. It was something Harmony pictured in her mind, and she looked forward to it. She wanted to experience all walks of life and professions through acting. And then she called Sarah. I'm taking the role, Sarah. Sarah was happy. Okay, sure, I'll talk to the director. Finally, we get to pick the scripts. You finally did it, Harmony. Harmony sighed. Back then, she would send her resumes to all companies and hoped she would at least get a supporting role, but her requests were all denied. She would never forget those days. Because she went through those dark days, Harmony wished for a brighter future. She would treasure everything she had and be grateful to the person who gave her everything. Harmony and Sarah chatted for a bit. After the little torment she went through earlier, she was getting a little tired. And it was almost summertime. The night was captivating and relaxing. Before she knew it, she had fallen asleep on the couch. When Ezekiel came out of the study and saw her sleeping on the couch, he cursed himself a little. He worked until too late in the night, so he didn't even have time for her. In the end, she fell asleep because she was bored. Ezekiel came to her side and leaned down. He stared at her lips and, captivated by them, kissed them lightly. Harmony opened her eyes and stared at him. As if talking in her sleep, she said, I'm tired, Ezekiel. Ezekiel couldn't possibly disturb her after she said that so cutely. He whispered, I'll take you to the bedroom. 
He put her on the bed after they came into the bedroom, and he tucked her in. Then he took a shower and came back for her. He changed into his pajamas. Feeling him getting into the bed, Harmony nudged closer to him in her sleep and put her arms around him. Ezekiel loved the feeling of this soft little thing in his arms. Sleeping with her in his embrace cured his slight insomnia. Dawn came. Harmony opened her eyes, but Ezekiel was not by her side. The note he left read, I went to the gym. While Harmony was going through the note, someone else was getting ready for a trip to the gym. It was Samantha. Her assistant shook her awake and told her Ezekiel went to the gym alone. They told her to make a chance encounter there quickly. Samantha quickly hopped out of bed and washed herself up. She then put some makeup on and left. Now's my chance. To seduce all the rich guys, she put a lot of work into building her body. She wore a pair of yoga pants and a white t-shirt that clung tightly to her skin, showing off her body. In the elevator, Samantha kept checking herself out, and she asked her assistant, So, how does my body look? Is that a rhetorical question? Great. Guys can't look away when they see you, the assistant praised. Samantha smiled. True. Maybe I can get Ezekiel's number later and hit on him behind Harmony's back. She felt accomplished being able to seduce Ezekiel behind Harmony's back. There were a few people in the gym. Those who had discipline and those who wanted to sculpt their bodies. Ezekiel was on a treadmill. He was in a gray tracksuit, looking handsome, dashing, and summery. Samantha fell for him. She had seen many men, but Ezekiel's body was perfect. She quickly went over to the treadmill Ezekiel was on. Ezekiel looked back, and Samantha pretended to be surprised. Hi, you're my friend's friend, aren't you? Pleasure seeing you. Ezekiel saw through Samantha. She didn't show up for a workout session, she came for him. Hello, said Ezekiel curtly. He turned the treadmill off and tried to leave. Samantha followed him. Sir, I don't really know how to use these gym equipment. Can you teach me? Ezekiel said, I don't have time. Samantha froze. She didn't expect Ezekiel to be this curt and distant, but she wasn't one to give up so easily. Quickly, she went after him. Sir, please. I really need someone's help. Ezekiel was going by a trainer, and he patted the guy's shoulder. Mate, this lady needs some help. Can you lend her a hand? The trainer looked at Samantha, and he was pleasantly surprised. How may I help you, miss? Samantha stopped and coolly answered, I don't need your help. It was then the trainer knew that Samantha wasn't ignorant about gym equipment. She was just trying to court that guy, so the trainer left. Samantha picked up some weights and trained a little. She then saw Ezekiel off, deciding not to disturb him. Back in the room, Harmony stretched her arms. She had a good night's sleep. Even her dreams were sweet. But when she saw the note, she was reminded of something. If Ezekiel's alone at the gym, will Samantha follow him? She is going to many lengths just to get him. Harmony quickly got out of bed and washed herself up, and then she picked a tracksuit from the clothes she brought with her. The tracksuit had a short torso, and the pants side reached high up the waist. It was quirky. Harmony tied her hair up into a ponytail and left. She asked around for the floor the gym was on, and she went into the elevator. A guy was inside, and he hit her up, attracted to her. Going to the gym, love. Wanna chat? Sorry, but I'm looking for someone, said Harmony. Oh, I know this place like the back of my hand. I can help you with your search. Thanks, but I don't need your help, declined Harmony. The guy clung to her like some stalker. He thought he could have a chance to get to know her, given that she was alone, so he followed her. Harmony went into the gym and was dumbfounded for a moment. The whole floor is a gym. Man, no wonder it's a seven-star hotel. Everything's expensive. Harmony had to search slowly. The guy following her didn't work out either. He followed her, trying to find a chance to help her. This is a big place, lady. It'll be hard to find the person you're looking for. Do you need my help? Harmony refused, no, thanks. She then saw a certain familiar figure. She was in an attractive outfit, to say the least. The woman was none other than Samantha. Harmony bit her lip. I knew it. She's here. She won't let any chance to approach Ezekiel go. Samantha didn't notice Harmony. She couldn't wait to try and hit on Ezekiel again. 
She could see that all the guys in the gym came because they had other things they wanted to do, but Ezekiel was the one really working out. He didn't even check out all the scantily clad ladies. Men like him had charm. She wanted to break that celibate side of his and see him getting flustered. Harmony was watching Samantha. To her surprise, Samantha was going to the person she was looking for. Ezekiel was training his arms. Harmony felt her heart flutter as she watched him train with strength. And she realized Samantha wasn't the only one staring at Ezekiel. All the young ladies around were doing the same thing. He's the center of everyone's attention. Harmony was in no hurry to get near them. She wanted to see how Samantha would approach Ezekiel. Samantha was swaying her hips like a wolf in heat. Her eyes were sparkling with seduction, and she approached Ezekiel. The men around her were attracted to the seductive air she was radiating, but Samantha wouldn't even look at them. She only had eyes for Ezekiel. Ezekiel knew she was coming, but he cared about his workout session more, so instead of leaving, he kept training his arms. Samantha was already standing before him. She held the equipment beside her and pulled on her shirt, revealing her plump chest. She then fanned herself. Oh, it's hot. Care to have a drink with me, Mr. Weiss? Ezekiel's eyes flashed with frustration. Not interested. Oh, don't be a stranger. I really want to treat you to a drink. You're Harmony's friend, so that makes you my friend, said Samantha brazenly. Unbeknownst to her, Harmony was approaching her from behind. She heard that, and refusing to let Samantha keep flirting around, she said, Sorry, Sam. I didn't make it clear last night. He's not my friend, he's my boyfriend, said Harmony. Seeing her, Ezekiel stopped training. He stood up, the iciness in his eyes disappearing, replaced by a smile. He happily listened as Harmony told Samantha he was her boyfriend. Samantha was shocked. She didn't think Harmony had arrived. Awkwardly, she said, is that so? I didn't hear you clearly last night. I thought this gentleman was just your friend. Harmony was already standing beside Ezekiel. Grumbling, she said, you didn't even ask me out for a gym session. You know I want to work out. She stood on tiptoes and kissed Ezekiel on his cheek. Ezekiel put an arm around Harmony's waist and kissed her in front of everyone. I wore you out last night, so I didn't want to disturb you, said Ezekiel. It was an obvious enough hint. Everyone could see that Ezekiel railed Harmony for a long while last night. Samantha heard everything, and every fiber of her being was filled with jealousy. Why did Ezekiel change the moment Harmony shows up? I thought he was supposed to be celibate. Don't be so smug. Harmony raised her head. Ezekiel smiled. Why shouldn't I be? Next time you introduce me to anyone, make it clear we're dating. I don't mind you calling me honey, you know. Harmony did not expect Ezekiel to take this further than her, but she played along. Fine, I'll tell everyone you're my husband next time. Maybe then they'll stop thinking they have a chance to steal you away from me. That was directed at Samantha, and Samantha's face turned green, red, purple, white, and even more colors in the span of moments. Ezekiel scanned Samantha coldly. Then, he said adamantly, don't worry. You're the only one I love. No one can steal you away from me. Samantha noticed that icy glance, and she inhaled sharply. Ezekiel was not like what she imagined at all. What kind of man is he? Good, said Harmony happily. There's no need to humiliate Samantha anymore. This is more than enough humiliation for her. Samantha tried to leave as gracefully as she could. I'll leave you two to it. I'll send my friend off, said Harmony. Sure, come back to me later. Ezekiel nodded and let her leave. Harmony approached Samantha. I'll send you off, Samantha. Samantha knew that wasn't just the thing Harmony wanted to do. She had no choice but to leave Ezekiel. Once they were out of his earshot, she turned around. You aren't just sending me off. Are you, Harmony? And you didn't come to the gym this early just to work out, did you? Harmony retorted, exposing Samantha's plan. Samantha smiled. So, you do know what I was going for. Harmony didn't look happy at all. Instead, she replied coldly, I was happy to see an old friend, but after everything you did, I know you're not the old Samantha I knew. No one's the same anymore. You're different as well. You've learned how to be shrewd. Plus, you hooked up with a rich guy. 
Why, don't want to share your good fortune with your friends, said Samantha, treating Ezekiel like some sort of exquisite merchandise to be shared. Harmony became angry as she sneered, do not insult my boyfriend, Samantha. He is not for sharing. He is mine alone. Samantha curled her lips into a nonchalant smirk. You're too naive, Harmony. In all these years in this industry, I've never seen any rich guy staying loyal to one woman. Dream on. We're friends, right? If he dumps you one day, you can hook us up. If I get any good guys, I'll hook you up with them too. Harmony looked at Samantha. I'm only saying this as your friend, Samantha. You shouldn't be so promiscuous. If you catch any diseases down the line, you'll suffer. Being someone's plaything isn't a badge of honor. Samantha's temper flared. Don't you take that tone with me, Harmony. You're not that noble yourself. I'll be waiting for the day you get kicked to the curb, just like what Reuben did to you. Harmony heaved a sigh, restraining her anger. No, God kicked that jerk away from my life and let me meet the man I truly like. Samantha scoffed at that notion. Don't make it sound like divine providence. We all know Reuben dumped you. Harmony arched her eyebrow as she refuted, so, I don't care, but if you try to steal my boyfriend away, I'll drag you down even if it's the last thing I do. Why you? And if you tell the media about my whereabouts again, I will sue you, warned Harmony. Samantha harumphed. And how do you know I did it? I just do. Harmony whirled and flounced off. Samantha stomped her foot angrily. She had lost her chance, and the money would never be hers now. She had no idea why Ezekiel was so hard to seduce. When Harmony returned, Ezekiel was waiting for her. Then, he wasted no time helping her train. A while later, a film of sweat was covering Harmony's skin. Ezekiel felt himself heating up at the sight. He wrapped an arm around her as he murmured, let's get back to our room and take a shower. So, we're not training anymore. Harmony asked curiously. Ezekiel saw the guys around staring at her from time to time. Even though they were only looking, he didn't like it at all. I'll get you an exclusive gym for yourself. Don't come to crowded places like this, said Ezekiel, a little jealous. He held her hand and left the gym. Harmony followed him into the elevator, back to their room, and into the bathroom. It was then Harmony realized what Ezekiel was trying to do. Even though he was a little flushed, Harmony had practically turned into a tomato. Are we really going to shower together? Asked Harmony quietly. Yep, said Ezekiel with determination. I'll scrub your back. I don't think he's going to just scrub my back. I don't believe him at all. You sure you're only going to scrub my back? Harmony raised her head, teasing him. Ezekiel chuckled and pulled her closer. If you want me to do something more, I won't say no. Harmony grinned. You're raring to go, aren't you? We both are. Ezekiel took her deeper into the bathroom. Harmony looked at his body. The veins were throbbing after that gym session. She poked his chest. Ezekiel looked at her as he asked flirtily, is it hard enough? I can train more. Harmony said sheepishly, it's hard enough. You have a ton of stamina, you know that. Ezekiel held Harmony's head and did to her the things he'd been wanting to do on the way back. Harmony was dizzy from the kiss. It was early in the morning, and they were already so intense. I can't take this. Samantha was pacing around in the room. Her manager arrived, and they asked, you sure you're out of options? This is a million and a half. You should try to make him yours. I did, but my moves were useless. He's not like the guys I met. The look in his eyes tells me that much. But you're hot. You can seduce any man you want. The manager was confident in her. Samantha sighed. I don't think he's the kind of guy who only cares about looks. It doesn't matter how much I tried, he was all icy. But for some reason, he gets all tender and soft the very second Harmony shows up. But didn't Harmony date Reuben for five years? She's not exactly unused goods. Why does Ezekiel like her? Who knows? I underestimated her. I can't finish this job. Just try. I heard Ezekiel's going to attend a banquet tonight. I'll slot you in. Banquet. An upscale one. Held by Presgrave Corporation. Do you have any idea of the hoops I went through just to get you a spot? I'll try. I'll dress up nicely and try to catch his attention. Let's try. It's a million and a half. 
It's been a while since you made that kind of money. I can only take 20% of that, but you, you can take the rest. Presgrave Corporation did have a business dinner that night, and Ezekiel was naturally invited. It was afternoon. Harmony felt someone kissing her forehead. She was tired, but she still opened her eyes. Ezekiel was sitting beside her. Harmony held his hand and buried her face in his palm. Then, she promptly went back to sleep. Ezekiel leaned lower and said, There's a banquet tonight, and I need you to be my date. Harmony blinked. You need me to go with you. Yep, said Ezekiel. Harmony nodded. Sure. She then held his hand, refusing to let him go. Ezekiel didn't pull his hand back either. He lay on his side and stayed with her. Once Harmony had slept enough, she rolled herself off the bed. When Ezekiel looked at her neck, he couldn't help but chuckle. Chapter 2741 Harmony knew what he was laughing at. So, she hastily covered her neck. Don't laugh. I told you not to kiss me there. Ezekiel smiled. It's all right. I want everyone to know you're mine. Are you friends with the Pressgraves? Harmony asked curiously. Yep. Our families have been friends for generations. My dad's good friends with the Presgrave family's head. Harmony leapt into his embrace. She loved his scent. She would stay in his embrace forever if she could. Ezekiel patted her head and kissed it. We'll go to the boutique later. It's all right. I can get Sarah to go with me. You can get back to work if you have to, said Harmony in consideration. Ezekiel smiled. Thanks for your understanding. Harmony asked Sarah to go on a trip to the boutique in the afternoon. The Presgrave banquet was no ordinary banquet. Thus, they had to be more meticulous with the gown. Ezekiel gave her a black card and told her to try out all the gowns she liked. Money was no problem. Harmony didn't want to take it at first, but Ezekiel insisted. So, she took it from him. Samantha was also getting busy in the boutique. She picked a sexy gown for the night. Even if she couldn't seduce Ezekiel, she had to snag someone. Besides, all the guests for the Presgrave banquet were rich and powerful. She would never let this chance go. Samantha was on the couch, served by a waitress. She then saw someone coming in. When she raised her head, she met Harmony's eyes. Samantha rose to her feet. What a coincidence. Don't tell me you're going to the Presgrave banquet tonight. You too, Harmony asked. Samantha said smugly, what? You think you can go but not me? I have lots of resources and connections. Harmony said in disgust, sure, go. Just don't get in my way. Sorry, but I'm there for Mr. Weiss. I'll make sure he looks at me, said Samantha brazenly. Harmony narrowed her eyes and ignored her. That was the only way to deal with shameless people like Samantha. Samantha harumphed. I'm challenging you, Harmony, I will make Mr. Weiss mine. Sarah said, your plan will fail, Samantha. Mr. Weiss will not fall for women like you. We'll see. Samantha cocked her eyebrow. I know men more than you two do. Harmony bit her lip. Then, she remembered what Ezekiel told her. With the friendship Ezekiel shares with the Pressgraves, it's not hard to cancel Samantha's invitation, right? Harmony had never tried to attack anyone before. Yet, she really couldn't resist pulling such a stunt when it came to Samantha. This woman had gone too far. Harmony and Sarah went upstairs. The manager came over and introduced all the gowns and origins of those dresses. Harmony was big and famous enough that the public knew who she was. The manager wouldn't dare to slack off on this. Harmony was trying out gowns on the second floor. Samantha wondered what she would wear for the banquet. So, she found an excuse to come upstairs. When she saw that Harmony was trying the gown she tried earlier but couldn't afford to rent, she felt crushed. The gowns the waitress handed to Harmony were rare items or expensive ones. These weren't items money alone could afford. Only famous people could get their hands on them. Samantha might have made some money from the rich guys, but she didn't have any achievements she could be proud of, thanks to her little side job. On the other hand, after the Asian film Harmony starred in became a hit, she starred in an ad for a famous jewelry company. Then, she received a guest appearance in an international film. All these accomplishments had turned her into an A-lister in the industry almost overnight. Harmony was someone to be envied in the industry. Regular celebrities wouldn't even dare mock her now. 
Harmony saw Samantha peeping at her through the corner of her eye. She looked at Samantha, and Samantha seized the opportunity to make her presence known. She approached her, smiling. I think you should pick another gown, Harmony. You don't have it in you to express the full beauty of this one. Sarah said, I don't suppose it's anything you should be worried about. Harmony has it in her to express the full beauty of anything she wears. Samantha's face fell in dismay as she said, I'll be waiting to witness your embarrassment tonight. I wonder if you can even get in, Harmony retorted, standing up. An amused Samantha arched her eyebrow. What? You think you can cancel my invitation? Harmony smiled. Perhaps I can. This time, Samantha couldn't maintain the smile on her face any longer. She decided not to get on Harmony's nerves further because she really needed to join this banquet. Harmony saw her off, and a gratified Sarah said, she should feel lucky you didn't go after her. I can't believe she came after you. Later that day, Harmony received a call from Ezekiel. He was here to pick her up. Harmony thought about it and brought her earlier plan up to Ezekiel. Samantha's going to show up tonight, but I don't want to see her, Ezekiel. Can you somehow stop her from showing up? Asked Harmony. Ezekiel hated women like Samantha as well. It was easy to grant Harmony her wish. All he had to do was call, and Harmony's mood wouldn't be ruined. Of course. Thus, Ezekiel called Jared. Hey, Jared, I need you to stop a certain guest from joining the banquet tonight. I don't want to see her there. No, she's not an important guest. Just someone's date. Sure, give me her name. I'll tell the guards to deny her entry, said Jared. After the call, Ezekiel put an arm around Harmony's shoulder. Don't worry, you don't have to see her tonight. Thank you. Harmony leaned on his chest, staring at the strobing neon lights outside. She was in a beautiful gown, looking like a princess, ready to attend a ball. She now understood why so many people wanted to climb the social ladder. The scenery at the top was gorgeous and relaxing. After she met Ezekiel, he was the one who took her hand and led her to a higher place in life to see the prettiest things this life had to offer. She was grateful and never greedy. Sometimes, she thought she couldn't even show off her delight. Otherwise, the gods might get jealous and snatch everything from her. The Presgrave banquet saw top dogs from the world of politics and business gathered together. It was a friendly banquet, and Jared, the heir to the Presgraves, was the host. Tons of reporters were outside the venue as well. They wouldn't dare expose the top dogs' identities and what they were doing, but if they could capture any photos with celebrities in them. That way, they wouldn't be sued if they posted it online. Lots of celebrities were joining that night. People from the world of MCs showed up, too. As dusk fell and lights shone brighter, a beautiful silhouette came out of a black car. She was the popular celebrity of the year, Harmony Mayo. She was holding the hand of a man who was obviously the rich kid of a really wealthy man. Plus, the woman that the man was holding hands with was gorgeous. Every wave of her hand and every gaze she gave the camera would gain furious clicks and shudders. Even the winds that night blessed her. When she turned around, her hair billowed in the wind. Frankly, she looked like an angel who had fallen to earth. She's gorgeous. I had no idea Harmony was this regal or this beautiful. Don't you know? Tons of hotties were in the movie she was in, but she shone brighter than all of them. She was just a mere newbie back then. Her looks are out of this world. After Harmony entered the venue, these reporters decided to take a break. Not too long later, someone else caught their eyes. Hey, that's Samantha. Quick, I can't believe she's here. Then again, it's not surprising. Wherever there are rich guys, she'll definitely be there. Samantha dressed for the occasion. She spent six figures renting this dress all to catch enough attention. The one place she stood out more than Harmony was how much she would reveal to the public, and the media loved taking photos of her skin. Samantha looked at the reporters and waved at them, showing off poses. The rich guy beside him was more than 50 years old as he said, let's go in. Don't want to be late. Samantha stopped posing and held the man's arm. Then, they went ahead. Guards were verifying the guests' identities at the entrance. The rich guy handed his invitation, and all Samantha had to do was show her ID. Alas, after the guard checked her ID, he extended his arm. She cannot go in. 
Samantha was shocked. What? Why? The rich guy defended her, this is my partner. Please, can you show some leniency and let her in? I'm sorry, sir, but our boss told us she can't be allowed inside. Since the host of this banquet banned Samantha, it had to mean there was something wrong with her. He only took her along because it was convenient. Unfortunately, he couldn't vouch for her now and risk his reputation. Sorry, Ms. Leiderman, you should go back now. Hey, can you talk to them for a bit? I really want to go in, Samantha pleaded, holding Mr. Boston's hand. Mr. Boston pulled her aside and whispered, I think you crossed someone you shouldn't. I have no power here, so you should leave. We'll talk later. I'm running late. Mr. Boston left, leaving Samantha behind. The reporters quickly snapped the scene. It was more than obvious that Samantha was denied entry. This was a good scoop. Samantha stood facing the winds awkwardly. She bit her lip and was reminded of what Harmony said. I wonder if you can even get in. Her face contorted in rage. You. Did you do this, UB asterisk TCH? Samantha knew it was Harmony. She hooked up with Ezekiel and had to have told him to deny Samantha entry. Damn it. I spent a lot of money on this dress. If I can't get in, I can't show it off. She had to stoop and call Harmony for help. Harmony was on the couch, taking a break. She heard her phone ring. Since she never logged Samantha's number in her contacts, she answered the call, who is this? It's me, Samantha. Harmony, I'm sorry for saying all that to you. Can you please let me come in? I promise I won't get in your way. Harmony was stunned. She didn't think Samantha would beg for her mercy. Harmony sneered, why are you begging me? It's funny you would think I'd help you. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Please. I spent a hundred and fifty grand to rent this dress. I can't waste that money. We used to be friends. Please let me in. Harmony was reminded of how Samantha tried to seduce Ezekiel earlier that morning. So, she quickly made up her mind and said coldly, I won't let you in because I don't want to see you, Samantha. Then, she hung up without another word. Samantha felt herself going insane with fury as she cursed, damn it be asterisk tch. The banquet was lavish, resplendent. The clash between wealth and power happened everywhere. Jared, the heir apparent of the press graves, greeted all guests confidently. Ezekiel stood beside him. The two outstanding men attracted the ladies' attention. Harmony knew Ezekiel came from a rich and powerful family. Nonetheless, she had never known much of his family. She just knew he could get whatever he wanted with a snap of his fingers. The people talking to Ezekiel now were those Harmony saw in financial magazines. Those people were rich, but they looked like they were Ezekiel's subordinates when they talked to him. Harmony rested her chin on her hand. She was confused as she wondered if she would have a future with Ezekiel, and her insecurity started flaring. Even if she gained some achievements in the industry, they were nothing compared to Ezekiel's life. It was already good enough that she could have a man as brilliant as Ezekiel for a short while in her life. So she wouldn't ask that much as to stay with him his whole life. A pair of ladies sat beside Harmony, obviously coming from affluent families. They were also staring at Ezekiel. Look, who's the hunk beside Mr. Presgrave? I've never seen him before. He's probably single. Then, we have a chance, right? We can give up on Presgrave. He loves his wife too much. Can't touch him. I can't believe a hot guy like him loves his wife so much. She should share her husband with other ladies. I heard a rich girl tried to start a scandal with Presgrave and be his mistress. Guess what happened to her? What? Her family went bankrupt. Presgrave did it. Or, to be exact, this Presgrave. Whoa. I envy his wife. Harmony was hearing the gossip about upper society quietly. She'd never heard about them before. Just then, a gorgeous girl pointed at Ezekiel. I will make him mine tonight. Harmony felt her heart clench as she looked at the wealthy lady. They were born to money and raised in opulence. Hence, they naturally exuded confidence. Even though Harmony was a public figure, these women wouldn't even look at her like she was an equal. The ladies then saw Harmony. She was beautiful, after all. You are, one of the ladies cocked her eyebrow. You're a celeb, aren't you? Didn't think they'd invite celebs. They were teasing Harmony out of boredom. Harmony smiled. I just came with a friend. 
This isn't a place anyone can get in. I bet you've gone through hoops. Oh, I remember now. You're Harmony Mayo, aren't you? The one who got famous because of that Asian film. I've watched it. Honestly, it's mediocre. I wonder how it became a hit. Harmony smiled as she said humbly, thanks for the comment. I'll keep working hard. I hate celebs, especially those who try to ride on the coattails of anything popular or related to the rich. If you have time, brush up on your acting. Don't try to get into circles you shouldn't be. It's tiring. The prettier lady wanted to mock. Harmony because she was jealous of her beauty. Some people would get angry merely because someone had better looks than them, not because they felt genuinely slighted. Yeah, I can't believe celebs now would try to get into upscale banquets to make themselves look better instead of working on their acting. Just because they've joined a few banquets and red carpet events doesn't mean they're classy now. Harmony was rendered speechless. She had a feeling these ladies were attacking her. So, she decided to ignore them. It was then Ezekiel looked in her direction. The ladies quickly sat up as they giggled in excitement. That hottie's coming. A moment ago, they were mocking Harmony. Yet, they were smiling like noble ladies in the blink of an eye. It was obvious that they were desperate to get Ezekiel's attention. Harmony watched them put on their fake smiles. She raised her head and saw Ezekiel coming toward her. So, she smiled, welcoming him. It was then the ladies realized Ezekiel wasn't looking at them, he was looking at the woman beside them. They were so caught off guard that they stared at her, utterly slap-jawed. Harmony stood up gracefully, flashing a smile at them. I didn't crash the banquet, I came with my boyfriend. Now, if you'll excuse me, she said and made her way towards Ezekiel. Before she even reached him, he had already taken her hand and affectionately ruffled her hair. Sorry to have kept you waiting. It's all right. I'm happy to wait. Harmony beamed brightly. The two women behind her suddenly felt as if they had been slapped in the face by the silent air, feeling both embarrassed and hurt. They hadn't expected that their casual mockery of Harmony would backfire so spectacularly. This man, as handsome as the heir of the Presgrave family, was actually her boyfriend. Samantha, who had been driven out, could only return to her car, but her unwillingness made her determined to retaliate. Just now, her client had called to cancel the deal, she no longer needed to seduce Ezekiel and was given 15,000 as a consolation. 15,000 isn't even enough for me to buy a bag. It's so insulting. Samantha gritted her teeth in anger. All right, let's find the next target. Her agent handed her a file. 50 years old, just divorced, with assets around 700 million. If you can secure him, getting 30 million will be no problem. Samantha glanced at the photo, crossed her arms, and huffed, he's old and ugly. I won't do it. Why can Harmony find a wealthy hunk? What am I lacking? She was driven mad by Harmony. Harmony just got lucky. And we all know whether she can have the last laugh. She's only that rich science plaything. Certainly, he will be tired of her in a year at most. Samantha couldn't help but grit her teeth. You have no idea how much Mr. Weiss likes her. He only has eyes for her and no other women. If one day she becomes Mrs. Weiss, I'll be beneath her for the rest of my life. What do you want to do? I want to defeat her. I want to ruin her reputation and make her lose Mr. Weiss' favor. At that, she dialed a media person's number. I'll pay 150,000, you find all the dirt on Harmony and expose it again. Leave it to us. We'll tell a compelling story. Fabricate as much as you can, preferably turning her image into a rotten B asterisk TCH who will stop at nothing to climb the social ladder. Don't worry, we have plenty of material that fits her image. Finally, venting a bit of her frustration, Samantha exhaled a murky breath and said, better at last. Do you have no better use for that 150,000 than on the media? Her agent sighed helplessly. Just then, Samantha picked up her phone to check the trending list and saw herself on it. The headline read, actress impeded at banquet, in a sorry state. Ah, I can't believe these reporters wrote about me like this. Samantha's chest heaved in anger as she demanded her agent. Get this trending topic down. With such high traffic, it will cost at least 700,000 to get it down. Where do we get that kind of money? Just let it hang there. It's not the first time we've gone viral. 
The agent didn't want to deal with it anymore because Samantha wasn't making her any money. Samantha glared at the banquet hall of the hotel. This trending topic was all thanks to Harmony, she wouldn't let her off so easily. Meanwhile, at the banquet, Ezekiel introduced Harmony to Jared, and Harmony, being in the most prestigious circle, had only ever heard of Jared, a top-tier wealthy heir, but had no chance to meet him. Now, she realized that Ezekiel was on the same level as Jared. She was very humble and polite to the guests around Ezekiel, and indeed, she was a well-behaved companion. However, being unaccustomed to such occasions, she soon had a bit too much red wine and started feeling a bit lightheaded. Coupled with the pressure of the glamorous social scene, she began to experience a considerable amount of stress. Ezekiel, I'm going to take a break over there. Come find me later, Harmony said to him. Are you tired? Do you want to go home? Ezekiel looked at her with concern. Harmony smiled. I'm not tired. I just need some time to myself. You go ahead. Ezekiel indeed had many guests to attend to that night. He led her to a nearby couch and handed her a cup of warm water. Don't drink any more wine, all right. Have some warm water instead. Okay. Harmony nodded. She really needed some water. As soon as Ezekiel left, the two ladies from earlier suddenly appeared, sitting on either side of her. Miss Mayo, we're sorry about earlier. We didn't mean to offend you. Yes, please don't take it personally. Harmony didn't expect them to come over and apologize. She smiled faintly. It's okay. Is that your boyfriend? What's his name? Which family is he from? They hadn't managed to find out about Ezekiel's background, so they decided to check with Harmony. Upon hearing their apology, Harmony realized they were trying to find out about Ezekiel through her, and she retorted, Are you interested in my boyfriend? The two girls blushed awkwardly for a few seconds, then chuckled, We just want to get to know him. We won't steal your boyfriend. If you're curious, find out for yourselves. I just want some peace. Harmony didn't bother to be polite. The two girls had no choice but to leave. They had actually gotten in through connections and didn't come from affluent families. They were hoping to meet some wealthy young men here. Looking at Ezekiel in the crowd, dazzling and charming, Harmony suddenly felt overwhelmed, feeling that she didn't deserve a man like him. She was unworthy, for he was absolutely outstanding. She had always been self-aware, knowing her worth and living a clear-headed life. Suddenly, her phone buzzed with a message. It was from Sarah, forwarding a trending post from Samantha. Looking at Samantha in the photo, Harmony didn't feel any pleasure or pride. She just thought the malice in this circle was too heavy. She just wanted to focus on acting, love her career, and earn some money. This was why she had always stayed true to her original intention and didn't fight for anything. Her popularity was the result of her hard work, and her acting skills were recognized because of her dedication. There were all sorts of speculations about her sleeping with directors and executives to climb up the ladder, but she was too exhausted to argue at this point. At this moment, an old rumor about her sleeping with directors and executives resurfaced online, suddenly gaining popularity. Alas, her current fame and status had brought her old rumors back into the spotlight. Out of boredom, she swiped her phone to check the news, only to see her own scandal, and she clenched her fists in anger. These people just won't let it go. Just then, a message from Sarah came in, Harmony, ignore the rumors online. I suspect someone deliberately paid to spread them. Harmony had recently offended quite a few people, including Catalina, Samantha, and various individuals competing with her for resources. So, she didn't need to guess who it was specifically. But to say it didn't affect her mood was impossible. Reading the comments from netizens was quite upsetting. After exchanging greetings with Jared, Ezekiel approached Harmony. Seeing her looking bored and frowning, he couldn't help but feel guilty and thought bringing her to these business banquets was a mistake. Next time, he wouldn't force her to join him and would let her rest at home instead. Sensing someone approaching, Harmony lifted her head and saw that it was Ezekiel. Quickly, she stashed her phone into her bag, not wanting him to see the negative rumors circulating online. Come on, let's go home, Ezekiel suggested. Seeing her face unnaturally flushed, he reached out to help her up while checking her forehead with his free hand. 
Harmony was just a bit tipsy and woozy from too much red wine, not sick. No fever, but your face is red. Are you feeling stuffy? Ezekiel asked with concern. Harmony shook her head. No, she was flushed with anger, genuinely upset by the negative rumors. Indeed, she felt much better after stepping outside with Ezekiel and feeling the natural night breeze. Dressed in an evening gown, she looked exceptionally charming, and her figure was perfect for such a curve revealing attire. Once they got into the car, they headed straight back to the hotel. Harmony didn't want to think about anything at the moment, she just leaned on the man's shoulder and dozed off. Ezekiel held her shoulder, occasionally lowering his head to check on her. Once they reached their hotel room, Harmony turned her back to him. Can you pull the zipper down for me? Ezekiel reached out to unzip her dress. Having admired her all night, he couldn't resist leaning down to plant a kiss on her fair shoulder. Harmony squirmed, don't kiss there. Where should I kiss, then? The man asked with a low chuckle. Harmony didn't dare to respond to his provocative words. She turned around with a smile. I'm going to change into my pajamas. Ezekiel watched her escape into the room. He didn't chase after her, knowing that she was his and couldn't escape. Harmony came out in a short, spaghetti-strapped nightgown, feeling more relaxed in front of Ezekiel now. His gaze was once again drawn to her, and he reached out to hold her slender waist. Harmony looked up, her face slightly flushed from the wine, her eyes alluring. She truly looked like a ripe peach. Ezekiel held the back of her head and leaned in for a kiss. Having just taken off his suit, he was now in a white shirt, exuding a strong masculine charm. It was another wonderful yet exhausting night, and Harmony thought she would break in two from her waist. In the morning, she received a call from Sarah. They were to meet with the director to discuss the script. Okay, I'll be there, Harmony assured. Where are you going? Ezekiel overheard Harmony's call as he came out of the shower. I have to meet with the director today, so I can't have lunch with you, she explained. She had just gotten out of bed and immediately felt soreness in her waist. Seeing that, Ezekiel felt guilty for being too wild last night. You should rest if your waist is sore. You can meet the director another day, Ezekiel suggested, concerned. Harmony's professionalism wouldn't allow her to skip the meeting. She shook her head, no, I have to go. He was so accomplished, how could she slack off? While she couldn't compare to him, she had to strive to improve. I'll drive you then, no need. My chauffeur will come and pick me up. Harmony didn't want to trouble him. Deep down, Ezekiel really wanted to tell her that he wanted to support her for the rest of their lives, and all she needed to do was be his woman. But he couldn't say it out loud, for he respected Harmony's decisions. Even if she wanted to continue working and acting, he respected her. He wouldn't suppress her passions or confine her. Respecting her in every way was the essence of his love for her. Okay, call me when you're done with work, and I'll come pick you up. Okay, thank you, Ezekiel. Harmony kissed him on the cheek. Meanwhile, Samantha was still in the hotel. She was eager to know how Ezekiel would react to Harmony's negative rumors. Would he be angry? Would he find Harmony repulsive? However, the hotel was too expensive, and she couldn't afford to stay any longer. She had to check out before noon. Regardless, she wished Harmony would be kicked out by him right now. Harmony left to meet the director, and Ezekiel decided to visit his grandmother and have lunch with her. In the lobby, Samantha, who was checking out, looked up and saw a man coming out of the elevator. Her heart raced with excitement. She couldn't believe her luck, she had run into Ezekiel here. Not only her, but also the female staff members were thrilled. Catching a glimpse of such a handsome man could surely add years to their lives. Emboldened, Samantha walked over to intercept Ezekiel. Mr. Weiss, could you spare a moment for a chat? She asked. What is it? Frost instantly filled Ezekiel's eyes upon seeing her. Mr. Weiss, please don't believe the online smear campaign against Harmony. I believe she's not like that. She's a hard worker and would never use her sexuality to get ahead, Samantha deliberately said. Sure enough, Ezekiel faltered for a moment. Samantha continued, truly, I trust Harmony's character. 
She's a virtuous person, even though there's evidence of her entering the director's room late at night, I believe they were just discussing the script. There's absolutely no way she would engage in any unethical behavior. Meanwhile, she was overjoyed inside, believing she was effectively tarnishing Harmony's reputation. She never thought she would have the chance to smear Harmony directly to Ezekiel. This was her payback for last night's incident. I don't want to hear about this. Move aside, Ezekiel said irritably. Samantha quickly stepped aside. Take care, Mr. Weiss. Watching Ezekiel's retreating figure, a triumphant smile curled up at the corners of her lips. Harmony, just you wait. I'll make Ezekiel despise you. Ezekiel got into his car and started scrolling through Harmony's news on his tablet. He quickly came across the latest scandal, which claimed she had entered the director's room and attended banquets with executives. He furrowed his brows deeply. No matter who spread the rumors, he would believe in Harmony's innocence. That said, he would never let those who maliciously tarnished her reputation off the hook, either. Back in the lobby, Samantha had just finished checking out. Little did she know, she had just made herself a ticket to prison, for Ezekiel wasn't someone who would tolerate harm to those he cared about. Meanwhile, Harmony was sitting in front of the director, having a successful discussion about the script. The director also highly praised her acting skills. Harmony, the internet is buzzing with negative news about you. Do you want to do some PR? The director, Heath Letterford, asked, as it was affecting their collaboration. Mr. Letterford, please trust Harmony. She's not that kind of person, Sarah said. I do trust you, but it would be better if you could handle this. Sarah smiled. Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Because a certain someone would never allow such a thing to happen. At 3 p.m., Ezekiel called after finishing the script discussion. She picked up, Ezekiel. Are you done? Ezekiel asked. Yes, we're done. Are you here? Come with me somewhere later. There are other matters to discuss. Other matters. Harmony was a bit confused, but she agreed, okay. Are you going somewhere later? Sarah asked, curious. Harmony smiled, I might have to take care of some business with Ezekiel. Ten minutes later, Ezekiel's car arrived. Harmony and Sarah went downstairs, only to find several media reporters waiting for her. They had somehow gotten wind of her presence and were waiting for her. Miss Mayo, is the negative news about you on the internet true? Do you need to clarify it yourself? Yes. Please answer this question directly. Can you give an explanation to your fans and netizens? Harmony was momentarily cornered. Sarah was in front pushing away the reporters and media personnel, excuse us, please stop taking pictures. Harmony is as clean as a whistle. Miss Mayo, how did you obtain the international script? Some people claim that you slept around to achieve success. What is your response to these allegations? The reporters asked more audacious questions. Noticing that she was unaccompanied by bodyguards or anyone else, they asked whatever questions came to mind. As long as Harmony provided a response, they could crat a story and profit from the attention. To their dismay, three black SUVs suddenly approached like a gust of wind out of nowhere, and six tall bodyguards emerged from the vehicles, forming a barrier between the reporters and Harmony. A tall and handsome figure stepped forward, taking Harmony's hand and glaring coldly at the media personnel. Let's go. Harmony immediately felt a strong sense of security and departed with Ezekiel. The media quickly snapped a few photos until they were out of sight. Who was that man just now? He doesn't seem to be one of our local scions. We have been investigating for so long and still cannot ascertain his identity. It's quite mysterious. At this moment, as Harmony was being escorted into the car by Ezekiel, he inquired, did any of them touch you? Harmony shook her head. No, they were just bothersome. Is it because of the negative rumors circulating online? Ezekiel suddenly asked. Harmony widened her beautiful eyes. You, how did you know? Did you see it? Ezekiel nodded. I read everything, and I will ensure that those who defame you face the consequences. Harmony nervously grasped his hand. You don't believe it, do you? Ezekiel, I haven't, I haven't been taken advantage of by anyone, and I haven't resorted to any unethical methods to get ahead, I. Ezekiel's gaze locked onto her, 
his large hand gently covering her lips, his arm pulling her into his embrace. Shish, say no more. I believe you. I will make those who spread rumors pay. I want everyone who seeks to frame you to understand the repercussions. Tears welled up in Harmony's eyes. She pursed her red lips but couldn't prevent the tears from falling. Ezekiel gently wiped away her tears. There's no need to cry over this. From now on, I won't allow anyone to bully you. At this moment, six imposing bodyguards entered a private press company. Even the security guards couldn't impede them and stood aside, trembling. W who are you? Summon your boss. One of them said in English. Our boss is not in. If your boss doesn't appear within a minute, we will start vandalizing your company. You, can you afford to pay for the damages if you destroy our company? A female team leader stepped forward angrily. Just then, a cold voice retorted, I can afford to demolish your company a hundred times over. All the employees who were observing were shocked to discover that the tall, handsome man was holding the hand of the woman they had collectively smeared earlier Harmony. Oh my god, why is Harmony here? Harmony had been informed by Ezekiel in the car that this company was responsible for the smear campaign against her. She was furious at the moment. Please summon your person in charge. I want to confront them in person and demand an explanation for the extensive defamation I have endured online. If you fail to provide an explanation, I will see you in court, she snarled. At this moment, all the employees were overwhelmed with guilt. They had merely followed orders from above and written numerous articles to defame Harmony that day. They never expected that the person they targeted would show up with six towering bodyguards. At this point, the manager hiding in the office had no choice but to appear. He immediately approached and apologized in a low voice. Miss Mayo, I am so sorry. It was our inexperienced staff who acted without thinking and offended you. We will promptly remove all content related to you immediately. Harmony sneered. Don't think you can use your interns as scapegoats. I want to know who bribed you to defame me. If you reveal the mastermind behind this, I might consider showing leniency. The manager, who had accepted a bribe of 150,000 from Samantha, was quick to deny any wrongdoing. Nervously, he laughed, no, no, we would never engage in such activities. However, his guilty demeanor was impossible to hide. Ezekiel sneered, in that case, your whole company can forget about escaping. Wait for my lawyer to arrive. Sir, this has nothing to do with us. We were just following the manager's orders. That's right, we were just doing what he told us to do during the morning meeting. He found these articles for us, and we were only responsible for uploading them. The employees immediately turned against the manager, pointing fingers at him. The manager broke out in a cold sweat. Harmony was determined to find the person behind the scenes. She seized the opportunity to say, Sir, it seems you can take all the blame. If you're not sentenced to three to five years, I'll be surprised. Cold sweat began dripping down the manager's face, and he quickly turned to Harmony. Miss Mayo, how about we settle this privately? Our company is willing to compensate you 150,000 and issue a public apology immediately. What do you say? Do you think I'm short of money? Harmony responded coldly. I won't settle this privately, and I don't want money or an apology. I just want you to serve five years in prison. No, no, Miss Mayo, the manager certainly didn't want to go to jail. Tell me then, who's behind this smear campaign against me? Harmony stared at him. Ezekiel didn't intervene, knowing that Harmony could handle this better. The manager, realizing he could no longer hide the truth, finally confessed, it was, it was Samantha. She called me this morning to smear you. I was just doing what I was paid to do, I didn't really want to smear you. Harmony clenched her fists. Samantha, do you have evidence? Hand them all to me. Harmony demanded. Yes, I have text messages, her voice recordings, and the record of the money transfer. I didn't delete anything. I'll screenshot everything and save it for you now. The manager quickly found a nearby computer and sent all the text messages, Samantha's voice recordings, and the money transfer record to Harmony after receiving the USB drive. Harmony turned to the manager. If I need you to testify, don't try to evade it. Otherwise, I won't let you off. I wouldn't dare, Miss Mayo, I'll testify immediately if you need me. 
The manager quickly responded, hoping to shift the trouble onto Samantha. After Harmony left with the evidence, the manager's assistant quickly handed him a piece of paper. Here, sir, wipe your sweat. The manager heaved a sigh of relief. I didn't expect Harmony to be so tough. At this moment, Samantha, having lost the job of seducing Ezekiel, was planning to move on to other men as she was running low on funds. In such a tense situation, she still spent 150000 to smear Harmony, which pained her greatly. Just as she was in the spa, the police came knocking on her door. Are you Samantha Leiterman? Samantha was startled and quickly opened her eyes. How can I help you? Please get dressed and come with us. Samantha had just spent tens of thousands on maintenance, but what came after her weight now was the police. She considered herself law-abiding. Even if she did seduce men, it wasn't illegal either. What do you want with me? I'm a law-abiding citizen. You're involved in a case of defamation through monetary transactions. Come with us, the officer said. Samantha was shocked. What? How is that possible? I've never done such a thing. To avoid being forcibly taken away by the police, Samantha had no choice but to cooperate and get into the police car. At the same time, she quickly contacted her agent to come to the police station to bail her out. On the way, Samantha racked her brains but couldn't figure out what law she had broken, and it wasn't until she walked into the police station and saw Harmony getting out of the car that she was completely stunned. Harmony Mayo, why are you here? Samantha exclaimed in shock. Harmony sneered, why do you think I'm here? Leiterman, you will pay for your actions. Samantha was taken into the interrogation room. At first, she denied everything until the police presented the evidence. Samantha listened to her own voice recordings, saw her own text messages and transfer records, and her face turned pale. How is this possible? She couldn't believe Harmony was actually suing her for this. She had smeared others before, and other artists had always turned a blind eye. But Harmony was serious and intended to sue her. Samantha, you're involved in defamation and bribery, with a significant amount of money involved. Prepare yourself. Prepare myself. Am I going to jail? Samantha, with her limited legal awareness, actually thought she hadn't broken the law. As long as Miss Mayo sues you, you'll face a minimum of three to five years in prison. I want to talk to my lawyer. Samantha was scared and panicked. Just then, Harmony entered, and Samantha immediately turned around, begging Harmony on her knees in front of the police. Harmony, please spare me. I'm still so young. I can't go to jail. I still need to support my parents. Please spare me. Harmony sneered, Samantha, do you think you can harm others without facing consequences? You tarnished my reputation with just a few words. When you decided to smear me, you should have considered the consequences. Samantha truly regretted her actions. It was just a thought at the time to smear Harmony. Little did she imagine this would be her fate. Harmony, I've learned my lesson. I really have. Please forgive me, let's settle this privately, don't sue me, don't take me to court. Not only will I sue you, but I will also expose this matter online, letting everyone see your true colors, Harmony said before leaving. Samantha slumped onto the ground, terrified at the thought of spending her prime years in jail. Now, the negative news about Harmony on the internet had been removed, but this incident also brought a wave of criticism toward Harmony. In the evening, after taking a bath, Harmony sat on the balcony couch, chatting with Sarah about the situation on the internet. The manager of the media outlet personally apologized, and soon after that, the police issued a notice detailing how Samantha had bribed the media to defame Harmony. Instantly, netizens were shocked. They hadn't expected such a dramatic turn of events. Not only had Harmony cleared her name, but she had also brought a lot of positive energy. She had also set an example for other artists in the industry, encouraging those who had been smeared but couldn't speak up. It was not right to let those with malicious intentions roam freely on the internet. Harmony also received support and endorsement from some industry insiders. Soon, not only was her reputation restored, but she also received praise and applause. This was an unexpected joy. Sarah laughed on the other end. We really owe Mr. Weiss a big thank you. With his support, we were able to handle this matter smoothly and decisively. Yes, 
Thanks to him, without his help, I might have had to endure this for a while and then let it slide. Harmony also sighed. The smooth resolution of this matter was all thanks to the strong backing and support from Ezekiel. Harmony turned her head to find Ezekiel emerging from the bathroom. Blushing, she said, Um, Sarah, we'll chat another time, all right. I have to go. No worries, I understand. Go and enjoy your time with Mr. Weiss. Sarah also tactfully hung up the phone. As Harmony put down her phone, Ezekiel had already sat next to her. Seeing the smile on her face, he also wanted to know what happened next. How is it? What's the follow-up to this matter? Wonderful. I did something very positive in the industry, which resonated with many artists. We can no longer remain silent in the face of harm from others. We need to stand up and make those malicious people pay the price. Harmony said. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.